The following is an exclusive presentation of GPB. The 2009 GHSA Football Championships live from the Georgia Dome. Funding has been provided in part by Georgia's Electric Membership Corporations, Lighting the Way, by the Georgia Student Finance Commission, GA College 411, Expand Your Opportunities, by Regions Bank, It's Time to Expect More, by the Atlanta Falcons, by viewers like you, thank you. And the GHSA would like to thank State Farm, Verizon Wireless, and Wilson for their support of GHSA athletic activities. Live from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia, it's the GHSA football championship game for the AA classification, where the defending state champions and the number three ranked Wolves of Buford are 13 and one, will be going for a three-peat at this level, but they'll have to get past the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun, who come into tonight's ball game with a 14 and 0 mark as they head for this double-A classification football game. Good afternoon and welcome upstairs into the broadcast booth here at the Georgia Dome. Charles Warren alongside Atlanta Falcons legend Jeff Van Note. John Nelson joins us momentarily. Jeff, we were in the same position last year with the same two teams vying for the same title. We'll probably have the same result. A lot of talented players we'll see in this afternoon's contest. That's right, Charles. I think the AJC today said three of the top ten players in the state of Georgia will be playing in this game tonight. Two on Calhoun, one for Buford. And who's ever able to establish a playing personality for their football team and maintain it throughout that game probably will come out ahead. Well, you talk about personality for the Calhoun Yellow Jackets. A lot of personality in that young man, David, David Rogers. The leading wide receiver in the state of Georgia, great size, six foot three, 205, 20 plus touchdowns on the year. Uh, a key for Buford will be able to, their ability to be able to contain him from making big plays. He will get a lot of help offensively from the quarterback, Nash Nance. Nash Nance is a transfer from uh, Darlington Prep up in Rome, and he's got the ability to extend plays. A very nice uh, thrower, though, 25-plus TDs on the year. So Nance and Rogers with a lot of the offensive punch, but leading the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun is head coach Hal Lamb. He's in his 11th campaign at the school. We sat down with him earlier in the week to get his thoughts about what we can expect from the Yellow Jackets in the, the ball game this afternoon. Offensively, we're going to try to spread the field. We got, uh, we, we feel like we got some good wide receivers. We like to get the ball to. We got a good running back that's kind of a scat back type kid, and uh, quarterback's a very smart kid. And we're going to try to get our athletes in space. Uh, you know, that's the way we're going to move the ball. And defensively, we're not very big on that side of the ball, and uh, we got to move our front. We're a three-three stack team, and uh, play a lot of zone coverage behind it. Uh, but we got to move our kids. Uh, we're not blessed with a whole lot of size on that side of the ball, but. Uh, you know, we got some speed on that side, so we got to be able to move them. And of course, the Wolves of Buford, they have plenty of personality on that team. They're going for the three-peat here, Jeff, and you don't get to that stage without a lot of personality and talent. No, they, they do have that. Uh, Jessel Curry, their leading rusher, averaging seven yards a carry, the son of former Falcon great linebacker out of North Carolina, Buddy Curry. Uh, he also leads the Buford team in interception. Nice two-way performer. Defensively, for the Wolves of Buford, they get a lot of help from this guy up front, Colton Houston. Colton Houston is an interesting player because he starts at offensive guard and then he switches over defensive tackle. He leads this team in the defensive line in tackles. It'll be nice to watch how he can perform both ways throughout a game. That's kind of a rarity anymore. And, of course, the Wolves are coached by Jess Simpson. He's in his sixth campaign at Buford. We caught up with him prior to the ball game, and this is what you can expect from the Wolves tonight. Well, Buford, on offense, we joke and say we're still American. Uh, we, we still run the I formation. Um, we have a, we're probably throwing it more this year than we've thrown it in the past with our quarterback, Alex Ross. I feel like he's really talented. But uh, at Buford, it starts and ends with our offensive line and backs, and uh, we feel like we have a really good front, and uh, we've got a bunch of big kids up there. Defensively, uh, we base out of a 4-3 you and a two-high shell playing cover two, and we do get quite multiple with that, and uh, we will break that as well. Um, defensively, we have a senior front, and on the perimeter, we're, we're very young, and I know today's going to be a big challenge for them. Thanks, Coach. These two teams are the only ones with a personality here in the Georgia Dome. We've got a true character on our sideline, and that's our sideline reporter, John Nelson. Nelly. Thank you, Charles. Good afternoon to you. And note the biggest aspect that these two teams may have to tackle to a championship, maybe just between the ears. Let's start with Buford. 
Buford, school record eight shutouts this season. The coaching staff told him this week you will not get number nine because of Calhoun and that high-powered spread. Expect a lot of defensive backs for Buford on defense. They just want a couple of stops per half, the offense to take advantage of those stops, and then that way you get your sixth title in this decade. Flip side for Calhoun. Coach Lamb's not worried necessarily about everything happening behind him. He just doesn't want to have happen what he calls getting three yards and a cloud of dusted to death as the Yellow Jackets chase after their first state title, Charles and Jeff, since 1952. Back upstairs. Thanks, John. Coming up, will the Wolves of Buford make it three in a row, or will the Yellow Jackets avenge last year's championship loss and leave the Georgia Dome with the hardware to prove it? Stick around. We start the answer to that question when we come back with the kickoff of the AA championship next on GPB. You are watching the 2009 GHSA Football Championships exclusively on GPB. Welcome back, everybody, inside of the Georgia Dome. We get set for the two-way classification state championship featuring the Wolves of Buford at 13-1 and, and the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun. They are 14-0 on the season. They are ranked number one coming into this matchup. And, of course, Jeff, this is the repeat of the 2008 championship matchup, Wolves winning that one last year. Well, Buford has, uh, has been dominant in, in state playoffs, uh, I think, for the last eight years. And uh, and then Calhoun, it's been a while for them, but they're back in it, and they won it. The Yellow Jackets of Calhoun, 14-0 on this season. Take a quick look at how they got here to the Georgia Dome in the playoffs. They beat Avondale 42-14 first round, got by North Oconee 39-14. Jefferson County, the next victim, and the recent in the quarterfinal, the semifinal, they beat a tough Lovett school, 49 to 41. A lot of points scored by the Yellow Jackets in the playoffs, and able to win there. As we take a look now at the Wolves and how they made it here to the championship ball game, Pepperell in the first round, an easy victim, 24 nothing. Jefferson next, Cook County, they shut them out, and Fitzgerald played them tough, but the Wolves pulled that one out by 10, 38-28. Well, the common opponent there, I think, is Levitt, though. It was uh, Levitt beat Buford early in the year, and then uh, Calhoun coming back to beat Levitt to get into this game. And uh, maybe a little contrasting in styles, Charles. One with a, a very explosive offense, the other one wanting to play defense. Buford, uh, maybe a better defensive team, and Calhoun, a very explosive offensive team. David Petroni will kick it away for the Wolves of Buford, and standing deep for the Yellow Jackets. It'll be a short pooch kick coming down to one of the up men near the 37 yard line. Landon Curtis on the reception of the kick to get us started. It'll be a good field position for the Yellow Jackets to start this first possession of this ball game. Ash Nance, the senior quarterback, 2,500 plus yards on the season, 25 touchdowns, good interception to touchdown ratio, but only picked eight picks for the Yellow Jackets. Look at the rest of that starting offense for the Yellow Jackets after this first play. Dance will show shotgun. Spread offense pretty much exclusively for the Yellow Jackets. You'll see that all afternoon long. Dance, short hitch pass out in the flats. They get it in the hands of Rodgers. Rodgers wants it past the 45 up near the 49-yard line. Ryan Dillard in on the stop for the Wolves of Buford. But the first play from scrimmage, Jeff, as you might expect, going right to their superstar wideout, Derrick Rogers. And Rogers gets it, runs it for a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Moves the chains nicely. Nice block that time, 39. David Collins out in front on that bubble screen. Line up for Calhoun up front. It's Holland Smith, Carmichael, and Greason, and Warren is the center. On a second down play, they're going to do a comeback throw to Rogers left side this time. Rogers in space, works it inside of Wolves territory near the 41. And again, close to the first down marker with Colton Houston coming in on a stop for the Wolves. Defensively for the Wolves of Buford, it's Davis, Cunningham, Houston, and DeWalt up front. Linebacker Staub, Swope, and Curry, the three in the middle. Barr, Head, English, and Dillard. This defensive secondary for Buford. And they will have their hands full as the Yellow Jackets like to throw the football. And we'll see just how that defensive secondary responds. On the ground now, left side is Christian looking for room. Leading the block is Nash. Nance, Nash creates a block downfield. The spring 
Christian to the outside and another first down pickup by the Yellow Jackets. Charles, that's one of the advantages running against the spread offense. Only three of the spread defense, even three defensive linemen. He's able to take it outside. You're right. Nash Nance gets out in front and a nice shield on a corner back there. Big pickup. Three first downs in a row. Christian over a thousand yards in the regular season for the Yellow Jackets. Play fake. They go back with the throwback route. Tunnel screen. They work it on the inside. Catch is made by J.T. Palmer. And Palmer works it inside of the 25. So the Yellow Jackets mixing it up here in this first quarter. One run to Christian. That was effective. And during the little throwback with these bubble screens and total screens working for them on this first possession. They are at the 22-yard line of the Wolves. Nash going to go with the flare route in the corner trying to get it to Rodgers. Jump ball. Rodgers can't pull it in. Dillard on the coverage for Buford. Ryan Dillard, 5'9", about 175. Derek Rogers, 6'3", 205. You're right, a jump ball, trying to get it to him in the end zone, almost pulls it off, though. Pretty good defense. That's just to throw it up, and who can pick it up? It'll be third down now for the Yellow Jackets. Nash. Trying to dump it out in the flats. Pass goes incomplete. Was trying to get it to Christian circling out of the backfield. But Nathan Staub on the coverage for the Wolves. And that'll bring up fourth down for the Yellow Jackets. Charles, Charles first time pressure uh, coming from the Buford defense. Nathan Staub, the other inside linebacker. The three linebackers are all their three leading tacklers. Staub, Curry, and Swope. This time he's able to put pressure on Nance. Throws that ball a lot sooner than he wanted. Adam Griffith now coming on to try the field goal. This will be a 39-yard effort by Griffith. Griffith with the kick, plenty of leg on it. Did he drive it through? And Griffith connects from 39 yards out. And the Yellow Jackets give you the first score of this double-A championship football game. So an impressive drive by the Yellow Jackets. They cap it off with the, th the three-point field goal by Adam Griffith. I think they were trying to catch Buford maybe uh, not ready to play. Uh, three quick plays, three quick first downs, and then finally Buford sort of settled down inside uh, inside their 30-yard line, put a stop on him, forced the field goal. The Yellow Jackets with an early lead, 3-0. We're at 10-10 remaining first quarter. Glad you could join us for this championship weekend from the Georgia Dome. This is the double-A classification championship ball game. Two teams that met last year in this same contest. Buford winning that one. But Calhoun coming back this year undefeated during the regular season. Buford surprisingly with a loss during the regular season against the tough Lovett team. And after that loss, which took place in the third week of the season, the Wolves able to run the table. Scoring drive for the Yellow Jackets. Seven plays, 41 yards, minute 50 it took, and Griffith closes it out with the 39-yard field goal. Adam Griffith, the sophomore, We'll talk more about him as this ball game progresses, Jeff. A very interesting personal story to him and his presence here on that Yellow Jacket team. Eric Barr and C.J. Moore stand deep for the Wolves. It's Buford getting set to have their first crack at offense. They will have a run back here. Certainly got the one as Barr with the football. Now up the gut he goes. Got a little crease left side. Works his way up near the 24. And that's where the Wolves offense will go to work. Junior quarterback Alex Ross at 6'2", 180 pounds. Over 1,500 yards in the air for Ross. 15 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Got that nice 2-1 to one ratio. Touchdowns, interceptions. See Ross looking at that wristband. We'll try to get a closer shot on that as this possession progresses. An interesting story about that wristband and what kinds of responsibilities he has on the field as a result. But it's first and ten for the Wolves now. Play fake as Ross rolls right side, raises, fires, got a man there. Catch made at the corner by Holly. Holly turns it upfield and works it to the 48-yard line.
Very nicely done. The rollout buys a lot of time. It's a three level pass. And it gets Page down deep. He sees Holly open and he is wide open underneath the zone. Good completion. So the football now at the 48 yard line after the first play from scrimmage for the Wolves. Holly coming out of the Wolves lineup after that first down catch and run. Extended backfield behind Ross. They fired out in the flats. Pass goes incomplete. It was intended for Jamal English. The cross, or Ross that is, floated that one. That one goes incomplete. Line up for the Wolves. It's Alexander, Millsap, Artis, and Houston with Alexander. That's Nathan Alexander, the center. Jones, Curry in the backfield. Page, English, and Gazaway, the receiving core for the Wolves of Buford. Second down effort now for the Wolves. Left side. They pitch it to Jones. Jones turns it back to the inside and moves the pack down near the 47. The Yellow Jackets of Calhoun defensively, they shape it up this way. It's Allen, Roberts, and Parker, the men in the trenches for Calhoun. Knight, White, and Kirby, the linebacking core. And the defensive secondary is Ralston, Palmer, Aker, Walraven, and Holbrook. Walraven leading the team in interceptions. Third down play coming now for Buford. They are inside of of Yellow Jacket territory at the 47. Shotgun for Ross. That's bar in motion. And he will roll that way. Ross will tuck and run back to the inside. Lost the football in the air. It was knocked out near the 45. Looks like Buford was able to keep the football. And Nathan Staub able to jump on that one, Jeff. Ross, it looks like he takes, gets a nice roll out. He gets a good block here from uh, Jessel, or not Jessel Curry, but a, a nice block from 33. And uh, Gus Roberts, 63, comes up, puts a good stick on him. Defense alignment. Calhoun is not very big, but very quick. Curry now will backpedal and put it away for the Wolves. J.T. Palmer stands near the 10 for the Yellow Jackets. It's low snap, but Curry handles. High punt by Curry. Palmer lets it bounce. It mm. goes straight in the air. Wolves will have a play inside of the five-yard line. They'll knock it down there. So Paul, Palmer elects to let that one go over his head, and we will step out. It's a 3 nothing lead for the Yellow Jackets over Buford. That was Nathan's goal. After opening your presents on Christmas Day, check with GPB to see how the holiday is celebrated on the other side of the pond. Rick Steves' European Christmas will bring you a variety of holiday traditions from all over the globe. Join us Christmas Day at 7 p.m. only on GPB. That time of year. Jeff, I didn't see you bring me anything. I'm assuming you left it in your car. You're going to give it to me after we leave here. I'm doing some work in the house this year. And the, the stockings are bare for everybody <laughs> related to the van notes are close. Are not, right? <laughs> I know where that puts me then. The Yellow Jackets will start their second position of the football game. They'll start this from their own three-yard line. They lead it 3 nothing. Nance will line up in the shotgun in the end zone. With a snap, flags thrown at the line of scrimmage. I think a little bit of motion by the offensive line. They, 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 right before that snap, of course, half distance the goal line. Dead ball, false start, offense, half the distance to the goal, first down. Officials for today's ball game, Rusty Wynn, the referee just made that call. Don Lyle's umpire, Lysman Doris Crawford, Jim Barrow, the line judge. Will Liskey, the field judge, and side judge is Bobby Colson. 
as they get the assessment there against the Yellow Jackets. First and goal for first and 11. Now from the one yard line. On the ground, they'll keep it. Nance, Nance fights away, fights his way up near the seven yard line. And Staub makes the stop for the Wolves. But Calhoun trying to get a little breathing room from the shadow of their end zone. A little inside trap uh, using the quarterback, left guard Carmichael pulling left to right. And Staub is a, a stout young lad. I mean, Nan uh, Nash Nance is a stout young lad at 6'3, 220. Second down. They'll go on the ground. Trying to get to a corner is Christian. Christian turns the corner for the Yellow Jackets. And there's a flag thrown on the field near the 11 yard line. And we'll check it out. Well, it's a, a trap the other side this time. With 57 pulling Greason. Nice bounce out. But uh, somebody held, and that's why he was able to bounce out. Usually somebody holding the contain man on the end, and that would have been uh, number six, A.J. Cunningham. Locked in the back. Uh. Offense. Athens is to the goal. Wow. Second down. So two penalties on this yellow jacket drive. And that'll push him back. This time they'll put it down near the five and a half yard line. Second down and six. I was surprised, Charles. The very first play looked like when they were back on the one before the, uh, the penalty, it looked like they were going to throw it. Calhoun was going to throw it on that play. They'll keep it on the ground. Christian works to the right side. Now fights his way up near the 15. Knocked out hard at the 16 yard line, but that's after. He runs it for a Yellow Jacket first down. C.J. Moore put the hit on him. But you see there as Christian bobbled the ball momentarily on the handoff, but still fighting ahead. And works it up near the 16 for the Yellow Jacket first. Corey missed him on that tackle attempt there. Well, almost 1,100 yards, averaging six a carry. Looked a little bit like the old Green Bay sweep or the USC sweep. They pulled both guards that time, Carmichael and Greason. The Yellow Jackets in their third championship game in the last five years have not been able to win any of those. Hope they can change that tonight as Christian runs it right side and walks out of bounds near the 23. 6-18 left first quarter. Calhoun undefeated at 14-0 in this championship ball game. Finished rank number one. They won their region. They will face a second and four from their own 23. Watch how the linemen all turn around and look and see what the quarterback's going to call. Nance, pitch pass out in the flats to Rodgers in space. Rodgers at the 30, works his way up near the 40, spins out of one tackle of scripts, and works his way to the 45. Swope able to push him down, but that's a good run by Derrick Rodgers. Well, Cody Ralston, the wide receiver, gets a great block on number one, Eric Barr of Buford. The good kick out block, a nice alley then for Rodgers just to take it up with this, his great size and speed. First and 10 now from the 45. They keep it on the inside. Nice ball fake by Nance. But the carry by Christian on the inside, pick up of about three, maybe four on that carry. Great lost start in uh, quarterback plays, the old ball fake. And to carry it out. Don't pay attention where the ball is. There's a little deception to this offense. You've seen them run a couple of counters so far, but for the most part, they want to attack the edges of Buford's defense. Second down and six. Nance on the throwback route. Rodgers. Good catch by Rodgers. Nice second effort on the run. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down marker. LeGrant on the stop for the Wolves. Well, that'll make it third down and one for the Yellow Jackets. It appeared that maybe Tyrell Sadler, 25 for Buford. Right there, looked like he almost had man for man on Derrick Rogers, and he makes the catch in front of him and still able to get away from him. Third down play coming now for Calhoun. 
Nance will keep it himself left side and knock down behind the line of scrimmage. Good surge by Jessel Curry for the Wolves. Well, that's Buford's uh, strength on defense. There are three linebackers. There are three leading tacklers. You see two of them right there. Jessel Curry, the first hit. Nathan Staub right behind him. Bringing up fourth down now for the Yellow Jackets. Fourth and two. And Yellow Jackets going to go for it here. Curtis lining up at quarterback. Now he'll try to kick it. It's hit at the line of scrimmage, I believe, and it takes a side bounce and goes out of bounds near the 32-yard line. So Curtis <laughs> got a little drop step putt right side. But the Wolves got a surge up front. Somebody tipped the football. They'll have good field position to start this drive. That's the first quick kick I've seen in maybe 15 years. I'm, I'm not sure. You don't, you don't see that play very often. Uh, a nice strategic move. General Nalen from Tennessee or Nylon, however you want to pronounce it, would have loved it. That's old Tennessee yeah. there. That's yeah. back yeah. in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid. You're dating me on that one, Jeff. <laughs> Time out. Buford. That's their first timeout. Timeout taken by the Wolves of Buford, trailing at 3 0 to the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun. Buford trying to go back to back to back as state champs. Already with six state titles as a program. Timeouts remaining. Calhoun with three, and Buford just burned one, so they're down to two. First ball game. We've got another one coming your way later today. It'll be the Gladiators of Clark Central at 12 and 2, beating the Patriots of Sandy Creek, surprisingly at 13 and 1 on the season. That one coming your way at 8 p.m. right here on GPB. And tomorrow we'll start at 1 o'clock with Savannah Christian and Wilcox County at 1. We'll give you the rundown for the rest of it after the live action. First and 10 now for the Wolves. Ross going to settle on the center. Lone set back behind him. They're going to go throw out route in the flats. Catch is made by Bars. Bars turns it up field and works it up near the 37-yard line. Aker and White combine on a stop for the Yellow Jackets. But the little hitch pass out in the flats. And Bars catches it in space and runs it up for about an eight-yard pickup for the Wolves. Both well, quarterbacks been trying to hit this pass in the first quarter. They've been high with the throw. Eight men in the box for Calhoun, man for man on the outside, and uh, they get the matchup they want, well executed. Take a look across, headed to the line of scrimmage, looking at that wristband. That wristband's got about 160 plays on it. They'll look to the sideline, and they'll give him two, and from there he can determine which play to run based upon the defense. On the ground, it's Curry looking for some space. Curry at the corner. Curry turns the corner, one man to beat, inside of the 30-yard line. But these are on the stop for the Yellow Jackets. But that's well after Curry turns the corner for the first down. Well, just a little man-on-man -man blocking right up the middle. Great cutback by Curry. Got along this year of uh, 65 or 55 yards for his longest run. So you see he has a little speed, maybe not enough to get away. Over 600 yards on the regular season for Jessel Curry. That per average carry is what's so impressive, almost seven yards per carry. But Zia's on the stop for the Yellow Jackets on the previous place. First and 10 now for the Wolves, down at the 26 of Calhoun. On the ground, and work at left side. Jones with the carry, and Jones bangs his way inside of the 25. Only a pickup of two on the play. Good defensive stop. Buford went heavy left in, in the motion, bringing the motion across. They had everybody on the left side of the center, except the guard and tackle on the other. And uh, good defense by Calhoun to hold that just to two yards. Calhoun defense holding opponents to 157 yards per game on average. Second down at eight. Ross rolls left side, now back to the right. 
Looking, throws it back to the middle of the field, threw it in traffic. This pass goes incomplete. He was trying to get it to Jamal English. He was trying to come back to help his quarterback, but threw it in a lot of traffic. J.T. Palmer and Brett Walraven, the nearest players to that football. Well, he tried to create a little something. He was uh, naked out there, scrambling out to the right. He was getting chased a, a little bit. Not pressured a lot, but never throw back to the middle of the field. I mean, there are just too many people collapsing around the receivers as they come across there. Good defense by Calhoun. Almost an interception, as you said, by uh, number 23, Walraven. Walraven with seven interceptions on the season. Almost had his eighth there. 52 tackles to go along with the seven interceptions for the senior. Third down at eight. Ross will take the snap and roll it left side. Raises, fires, through oh. it in traffic. Pass goes incomplete. Had a man sliding the route near the five-yard line. Alex Kirby was able to tip it and change the direction of the pass. Boy, rifled this ball. Kedrick, Kedrick Baker back there, number 10. 29 back there, Cameron Boosed us. And, uh, this, this is a nice throw, though, really. Yeah. I mean, moving left and throwing across your body like that, put a lot of zip on it. But it was a uh, decent defense undercutting him. Looks like they're going for it. Making a fourth down at eight now for the Wolves. Football at the 24-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. Oh, Flags yeah. coming in at the line of scrimmage. Too much time. Dead ball, delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. So the Wolves with the penalty likely changed their mind about the fourth down effort here now, Jeff. That'll push them back five more. Well, it, 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 correction. Buford called a timeout before the uh, time uh, expired. <laughs> no foul on the play, fourth down. Okay. <laughs> you know, it, a smart move. Uh, by Coach uh, Simpson because they were confused out there. You could see uh, Alex Ross talking. They had a, like a, you know, the old eye, the triple eye back there. They all three backs, and he was talking to them and they, looking at his wrist. And very smart move by Coach Simpson since he wanted to go for it to save the play. John Nelson standing by at sideline. Guys here with a very proud papa. The kicker responsible for the three points on the board for Calhoun, Adam Griffith, a sophomore. Here's his dad, Tom. It's a great story. You adopted him a couple years ago from Poland. He hadn't even seen American football. No, actually, the, uh, the first game he saw, he, he played in himself. So <laughs> he had not actually been to American football at all. And I saw you here on the sidelines helping him out with his kicking game. He had a 50-yarder a couple of uh, weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So 39 is nothing for him, right? Yes, it is. He's got a great leg. <laughs> <laughs> Let's send it back upstairs for this play. Fourth and eight for the Wolves after the timeout. They slide a man down the line of scrimmage. That's Page. Ross rolls that way, fires through it, but incomplete, almost picked off near the 15 yard line. Aker has it sized up for the Yellow Jackets, but not able to pull it in. But the Yellow Jackets will get the football on the turnover of downs. Well, they went heavy left, Buf or heavy right, Buford, and he rolls to the right, boss. Well played, as you said, by Aker in the short zone. Trying to get the ball to uh, Jamal English. And uh, just a nice defensive play. Big defensive stop. So the Yellow Jackets able to stop the Wolves on fourth down. They'll get it on offense from their own 24 now. Nance showing shotgun. He'll take the snap. Looking upfield, got some time. Ball thrown in traffic at the middle of the field and incomplete. He was going downfield, trying to get it to Cody Ralston. But he threw that one in double coverage traffic. You know, very, uh, he had two receivers running in the middle of the field in uh, uh, Acero and uh, Nathan Staub. Very uh, unusual to have two in deep middle patterns. Buford dropping eight for the defense and uh, getting their linebackers very, very deep in the underneath. Ralston not able to pull it in. It'll be second down. Dance with the snap. They're going to set screen left side. Out in space at the corner is Christian. Christian dances his way past the 35 and past two would-be tacklers. Out of bounds near the 38-yard line. Curry knocked him out of bounds for the Wolves. 
But that's a first down pickup by Dustin Christian. The timing is not there on this screen. Ian Carmichael is out uh, very, very early, the left guard. And I think he's the only blocker they have out there. But uh, you got to give Hunter, Christian Hunter, the, uh, the ability to make this play. At the sidelines, Nash, Nash with the pass, pass to Palmer. Palmer able to pull it in after about a five yard pickup at the sideline. So Nance with a clean pass just in front of the Yellow Jacket bench. That'll make it second down and five now for Calhoun. Well, when he stands there in that pocket and just looks down downfield, not pressured, a lot of time, looks very classic throwing that football. Seven completions thus far in his first quarter for Nance. Now he'll keep it on the ground left side, read the block to the outside and runs it for the Yellow Jacket first down. C.J. Moore in on the stop for the Wolves. But after Nash Nance runs it for the Yellow Jacket first, just inside of Buford territory. Play could have gotten a lot more yardage. Palmer needs to maintain that block. The wide receiver has got a lot of height on, on uh, C.J. Moore, and he just needs to maintain that a little longer. Could have been a much bigger game. First and 10 after the run. Nance fires to the sideline. Rodgers has to go down to make the catch. They rule it incomplete near the 45. Well, Rodgers not able to pull that one in, but the real game changer for the Yellow Jackets has been all season long. No question about it. The season he turned in, Jeff, he's, no one would argue with it with the statement that he's the best receiver in the state of Georgia. 19 and a half yards a catch, 20 plus uh, touchdowns on the year. I think he's a kind of a guy you don't want to. I know they throw, try to throw in a couple of bubble screens to get him going. He's had a little bit of success there, but I think he's a guy to hit in stride a little bit, get him deep, Come get the, ma the matchup that they have. Calhoun. The Yellow Jackets take the time out, facing a second down and 10 with a minute 16 left, first quarter. They lead it 3 0. We pick up our schedule for tomorrow in championship action. It'll be the Raiders of Savannah Christian undefeated on the season, meeting the Patriots of Wilcox County at 12 and 2. That one coming your way at 1 p.m. on GPB. Then we go to the Triple A. It'll be the Red Elements of Gainesville. They're undefeated at 14 and 0. They will beat the Trojans of Peach County also at 14 and 0. That one at 4:30. And Jeff will get the pleasure of calling that ball game. Something's got to give on that one. And then we wind up our coverage tomorrow night with the 5A championships. It'll be the Wildcats of Camden County at 12 and 2. They will beat the Eagles of Northside at 13 and 1. That one coming your way tomorrow night at 8 p.m. We hope that you can join us for all of those ball games. All of them are going to be live for you right here on GPB. The Yellow Jackets with two timeouts left now, and Buford down to one. Survey some of the fans here who made the trip up to Atlanta for this championship ball game. After the timeout now, Yellow Jackets from the 49 of the Wolves. Quick pitch right side. Rogers looking for space and hit at the line of scrimmage. David Collins on that carry for the Yellow Jackets, not Rogers and Rogers. It's Collins hit behind the line as they went with the student body right. Well, he's got Dustin Christian out in front of him. Dustin, of course, is a, is a wonderful runner. Got to be a blocker too, and they're looking for a block, and he he's got to force the action, and not allow the penetration on a play like that, especially a toss. It just it disrupts the play too much. Third and ten, no gain on that play by Collins. Short side of the field, Nance looking upfield now, throwing it back to the middle of the field, double coverage, and knocked away. They were trying to get it down to Rogers near the five, but good defensive work by Eric Barr to knock it down. Harris head back there on the coverage as well for the Wolves. That's another one of those. Hey, I'm going to throw the ball up. I got a lot of time. There's not a lot of pressure on me. Good protection by the Calhoun offensive line. I'm going to throw it up, make a play in front of the safeties. Paris head and Eric Barr. A little bit underthrown. So now the Yellow Jackets blade Beavers will kick it away. Not able to advance it any further. Good high kick by Beavers. English awaits. Fair catch called for and made at the 18-yard line. Under a minute remains in this first quarter. 
Wolves of Buford getting set to go back on offense, trailing at 3 0 to the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun. Wolves, her eighth appearance in the eight times in the semifinals in the last 10 years as well. 22 region titles, nine consecutive region titles for the Wolves as they keep it on the ground. It's Jones working it up past the 20 to the 21 yard line. Hubert has a big offensive line. Millsap, 6'5, 333. Alexander, 6'5, 319. Those are the two tackles. Yeah. So they've got a nice big <laughs> offensive line. Maybe they'll get back to a little bit more of a mash game. Take a look at those big players as they make it to the sideline. We are at the end of one. It's Calhoun leading Buford 3 0 in this double A championship football game. You're watching the 2009 GHSA football championships on GPP. And we are back live at the loud Georgia Dome. Yellow Jackets lead it 3-0 over the Wolves as we go to a second and five for Buford from their own 23-yard line. Four I formation set behind Ross. Now they break it up. They send the man in motion left side. On the counter play, they give it to Curry, but nothing happening on the inside. Actually tripped over one of his own blocker's feet trying to get started. Well, that's great penetration that time. Uh, Caden Parker, the uh, defensive uh, lineman, just back in the backfield, disrupting. They were trying to pull the left guard, and uh, he just the play was disrupted from the beginning by his penetration. Third and five now. Ross rolls right side at the sideline. He'll tuck and run at the 30. Dances the sideline. Runs out of bounds near the 37. That's enough for the Wolves' first down. Nice recognition by Alex Ross, the junior quarterback on that play. It is good recognition. As you see, he's got Curry right in front of him. He looks at him briefly. Curry's smart and turns upfield, gets a nice pancake block, and Curry's got 23 catches on the air. Good pass receiver coming out of the backfield. Well executed, though, by Alex Ross. First and 10 from the 37. Wolves stacking the left side of the line. They'll run it that way. They're running and spinning ahead on the carry is Staub. Staub fights ahead for maybe a yard, not much more. Josh White, heavy pursuit on the inside for the Yellow Jackets. Little use of unbalanced here and uh, trying to get Staub the fullback loose. Josh White all over that. They did not. You got to stop penetration. The very first thing, anytime you pull a lineman, you have to stop the penetration. White read it well, member of their track team, and blazed in there to make that tackle. <laughs> Showed it all there. So second down at eight. Ross raises, fires through it, out of bounds, incomplete. Trying to get it to Sherman Page, who cut his rod out near the 47-yard line. So make it third and eight now. Coming at you right in your living room here. Yeah, and they're trying to get this play very quickly. Just a little bit of a turnout by Page. It's like he might have hurt his wrist a little bit. He's come over the sidelines to have him take a look at it, but the ball is thrown a little bit outside him as he makes his break. Ross looks like he's got a palm pilot or something in there. Like he's texting or something. <laughs> he's a, Hold on, guys. Uh, Let me get this text out of the way. <laughs> uh, modern day football. <laughs> Third down at eight now. That's Barr in motion, left side. They'll stack three that way. Ross rolls to his left. Now he'll try to run with it and hit behind the line of scrimmage. Josh White again in on the stop there for the Yellow Jackets defensively. Got a sense of Ross saw something out there, but it may have gotten covered by the secondary. Took that option away from him. Yeah, he's, get, he's going to get early pressure. Kelby Holbrook's going to come around the backside, and he's looking downfield. Excellent coverage this time, though, by Calhoun. He doesn't have anybody open, so he, by the time he decided to tuck it and run, White is over him. Curry to putt. At the line of scrimmage, Derek Rogers trying to get the early jump, see if he can get in there and get a block on the putt. But he's offsides. 
think I read in one of the playoff games, Rodgers blocked three yeah. punts. Uh, and maybe defense, four during the playoffs. So he... Outstanding go three. player. Three, three punts in one game. I think one of them he recovered for a touchdown. Ah, faked it. Wow. Kick by Curry. Fair catch called for it. Over the shoulder. Fair catch made by J.T. Palmer. So the football over to the Yellow Jackets. The Yellow Jackets coached by Hal Lamb. You see him on your screen. And let him, let him tell you what he likes about this team. What's special about this team. Well, this, this team has been special since day one. You know, uh, they've come together as a unit. Uh, you know, we started, we got a great start to the year. Uh, we were 3-0 and going into our, our region play, and, and these kids are special. We got a big senior class. There's 24 kids on, in our senior class, and they've come together as a group and been great leaders for our football team. And you know they want to cap it off with a, with a Double A crowd if they can. They're going to do it a throwback, trying to get it downfield. Pass goes incomplete. Oh, oh wide open. Rick LeGrant had an interception opportunity there for the Wolves and not able to pull it in. Derek Rogers and uh, David Collins. David Collins is, uh, is getting this ball and taking it wide. Uh, he's the thrower and uh, they just <laughs> misread the route. I mean, uh, you're right. I think he looks like he's throwing uh, to the Buford DB. Collins with that pass attempt. And I can say this safely, he's no Nash Nance. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 10 now. They'll keep it on the ground. Nice play fake by Nance. He'll keep it and run it past the 26 yard line. Peppered at the sideline by C.J. Moore and a couple of other Wolves. Paris had it on that hit as well, but it's a nice run by Nance. Left side, it'll bring up a third down and about two for the Yellow Jackets. It's the third time I think uh, so far in the first half they've run Nash on this play the fake in the backfield and then uh, trying to take it around the end and see what he can pick up as I said he's about 6'3", 220 looks like a pretty good athlete. And three carries 12 yards of that first quarter. First carry here in the second it's third out and less than a yard. Nance trying to keep it himself and denied behind the line of scrimmage Jerome Davis able to get in there and pull him down. That's a big play by the Wolf defense. Oh, tremendous play by Jerome Davis. Just looking at a replay and just got the penetration. He plays defensive end. He's able to knife in through that defensive line. You got to ensure the line of scrimmage. That's the very first thing you do in offensive line play is ensure the line of scrimmage. Beavers to kick. English awaits. Long snap count. They're trying to see if they couldn't get him to jump off. Now Beavers with the kick. Fair catch called for the fumble on the fair catch attempt. They're going to rule him down though at the 40 yard line. Talk to Jess Simpson. Got his thoughts about what's special about this team and here are his thoughts. This year at Buford, um, what's special and unique about this football team is, uh, you know, how, how it's it's taken all three classes. It's probably as much as any year at Buford. Um, you know, There's maybe no outwardly the expe expectations were still as high, but, but inside the program we knew we were going to count on, you know, we have 16 seniors, which is a smaller senior class than we've had. Um, and then our, we've really had to lean on our juniors and then quite a, quite a few sophomores. So for this team and this run that we've been on to count on those groups and, and see uh, those different groups step up and grow in their own ways it has really been a lot of fun to coach. Coach Simpson with his thoughts about this year's team. Wolves take it first and 10 from their own 40. No infraction on the punt return in case you're wondering. Behind a lot of scrimmage. A lot of clashing going on there. Carry by Jones and Gus Roberts introduces himself near the 35 yard line. We got Cameron Budzius, who is an outside linebacker. He's going to take the fullback head on to this time. And the playing fullback is Andre Johnson. You just don't have any continuity when they cross that line of scrimmage and disrupt the running play. Good, good job by Budzius at the linebacker spot. Roberts with 73 tackles. Nine of those tackles were lost, but picked, picked up his 10th on that one. So it is second down and 13 now for the Wolves. They back paddle to their own 37 for this second down play. Oh, 
Ross with an eye formation behind him. Short drop, now fakes it, gives it on the ground. Back up the middle with the carry is Jones. And Jones down near the 45-yard line. Inside of Yellow Jacket territory. Good blocking assignment there by the Wolves up front to create a good, nice hole for Jones. Well, the big splits give the line a nice job. Great job by the center. Jessel Curry in on the middle linebacker. Number eight. Um, that is uh, Alex Kirby. Nice job by Jessel Curry. Good faking to uh, make them think it was a pass, sort of a lead draw. Jones over 500 yards on the regular season. He'll pitch it left side. Jones again tries to step through. He does. Gets to the second level and works his way to the 40-yard line. Kirby in on that stop. Nice quick hitting first down play by Sean Jones. That was a great block out of left tackle. Valdal Alexander as he rolls up. Uh, uh, just a good stick and stay with Gus Roberts. Got a lot of size on him. Six foot five, 320 versus Gus Roberts. Second down at six. We're under seven minutes remaining in this first half. Low scoring affair right now. Yellow Jackets leading at three nothing. But the Wolves on the Yellow Jackets side of the football field facing a second and six. Curry in motion slides the line right side. The step back. They're going to do a throw down field. Got a man there wide open for the catch is head. Head works his way down near the six yard line. Jamal English. He's doing the throwing that time for the Wolves. He stepped back behind the line of scrimmage to get the football from Ross. And English had a wide open head down the sideline. If he throws it in stride, head can run it in from there. Had to wait momentarily to catch for the football to catch him. And it goes good, and it puts the football down inside the red zone for the Wolves at Buford. Left side with the pitch on the carry now is Smith. That's Darian Smith. Smith works it near the five. Kirby in on a stop for the Yellow Jackets defensively. Buford constantly shifting their line and their tight ends and their wide receivers trying to gain an advantage by formation. And uh, this job, nice job by Alex Kirby. We talked about getting blocked a, a play a couple of plays ago. This time he knifes in and stops that play. Second and goal to go now. Ross with Curry, the load set back behind him. They'll run it right side behind the power. Curry bangs it inside of the five down near the three. They went with that off balance line, Jeff, as we saw it one time before. This time they run it into the strength of that off balance line, got it down to the three. It'll be third and goal to go. Charles, I don't see a lot of shifting either as a, by Calhoun. I think they're just, they, they do it with their linebackers or something. They're playing that formation with their linebackers and rather than moving their line. Time out called for by Coach Jess Simpson for the Wolves of Buford. Buford. They were going on a third down and three and not comfortable with what they were thinking of doing. Calhoun now with two timeouts left. Buford just burned their last with five minutes, 12 seconds left in this first half of football. Buford, powerhouse in AA football in the last decade has been phenomenal. Over 138 wins, just seven losses. You can only play 150 games during a decade, and they got right up to the mark on that. Regular season, 97 and three, eight state championship ball games. They got five titles out of that. So you talk about a dominating decade. The Wolves really are. Dexter Wood, of course, a longtime great uh, coach here in the state of Georgia, over with that program. He coached Jess Simpson over at Marietta, and then Jess. Coach with him and continue that tradition and two time state defending champ right now. After the timeout, the Wolves back up to the football field. Third down, goal to go from the three. Ross lines up in shotgun. Smith joins him in the backfield. Ross rolls right side, still rolling. Now he'll turn it back left. If he can get a block there, may have something. Ross back to the inside. Ross wrestled down near the one. <laughs> a 
Ross with about 30, 40 yards of real estate covered there. And a pickup of about two on the play. It'll be fourth and goal to go as Hunter Knight makes the stop on Ross. <laughs> he, you know, he does a nice job of, of keeping the play going, extending the play, as they say. He is not a runner. I mean, he's averaged about one and a half yards during the season. But this is a nice movement by Ross to keep the play alive, not take a big loss, give themselves another play. Now they pack it in on a fourth and goal to go from the one. Boy, they're awfully closer there. They'll stick it to the second man. Curry left side. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown Wolves. They packed three in the backfield on that one, Jeff, and gave it to the last man through. He did a nice job with this, uh, uh, just power football, putting it on their old line. Give us some room, give us an inch, don't, don't allow penetration. Let Curry score touchdown. He did it 14 times for him this year running the ball. Petroni with the point after that one's blocked at the line of scrimmage. Hunter Knight coming in streaking from the right side, able to get in there and knock the football down. That is a trait of that Yellow Jacket team throughout the regular season. And they knocked down the extra point attempt there. It's a 6-3 lead for the Wolves. We'll step out. You're watching the 2009 GHSA Football Championships on GPB. Six three lead for the Wolves over the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun after the one yard plunge left side by Jessel Curry. Wolves with their first lead of the football game. Catch front line on Tuesday night, December 29th at 10 p.m. for the Madoff Affair. See how Bernie made off with billions while keeping the feds at bay. That's front line December 29th at 10 p.m. on GPB. <laughs> no I think, I, I think I might check that out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly one of the big news items of this past year. I think I've won the uh, the London lottery now on my. <laughs> oh no! I thought I had 78 that. times in the last uh, three weeks. I'm waiting for that. <laughs> Christian will stand deep, and it's a short pooch kick coming down, and it will come down to Aker. Aker lost the football near the 28-yard line, but we will see if it stays. It will stay with the Yellow Jackets. We need viewers like you to help support the live broadcast of these games. You can show your support by becoming a member of Georgia Public Broadcasting. Simply call one of the numbers on your screen or visit our website at gpb.org. And thank you for supporting Georgia Public Broadcasting. So four minutes and 11 seconds left here in this first half of football. We hope you're enjoying our coverage of the state championships on GPB. Just underway, the first of five coming your way over this championship weekend. 6-3 lead for the Wolves of Buford. Calhoun trying to answer. Bash puts it on the ground. Christian works to the right side. He's down behind the line of scrimmage. Derek Roger. I'm going to give it to Roger. Andrew Swope in on the stop there for the Yellow Jackets. Nice play once again by Jerome Davis, 44, the left defensive end. That second time, his penetration, he was in the backfield forcing the running back underneath him, Christian underneath him. Good job. Loss of a half yard on that play. Now, quick hitting pass out in the flats. That's Rodgers with the football. Rodgers knocked out of bounds near the 36-yard line. Ryan Dillard pushed him out. That'll make it third down and about three now for the Yellow Jackets. Good block at time on the bubble screen. On uh, number 33, Cody Ralston against Eric Barr. Anytime they lay off Rodgers, and they are, they're giving him a little cushion. Looks like they just want to stand it up and throw it out there. Rodgers with four catches in the first quarter of the game. Short side of the field, they go back to Rodgers. Rodgers at the corner for the first down grab. Nice route behind the marker. They'll move the chains up to the 42. Marion Smith and Ryan Dillard pushing him out at the sideline. A double coverage, though. I mean, a short and underneath, and uh, over top and underneath, and still a completion for the first down. From the 42. 
Vance, end shotgun. Gives it on the inside, Christian. Christian bangs his way past the 45, up near the 37. Harris Head making the stop at that second level for the Buford defense. Second and five after the run by Christian. Just running a little bit of power inside, pulling the backside tackle and the backside guard, 68 and 64, Ian Carmichael, Garrett Holland. Nice job, power football. Harris, or Dustin Christian, also the point guard for the Calhoun basketball team. Rogers out in space left side now. Spins and works his way down the field. A flag coming in there, likely face mask, but we will check it out at the point of contact. King near the 48. It's either a face mask or else they're going to get holding downfield. Palmer holding one of the DBs maybe downfield as he got out in front. Going against the Yellow Jackets. So they'll mark this off at the point of the infraction. Holding offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. So the football will rest at the 49 yard line. In order to make those bubble screens work, you got to have your other receivers be able to block. Palmer is a very fine blocker on this. He's got great size on the, uh, the two five nine Buford cornerbacks today, and he's been blocking them most of the evening. This time, maybe he got his hands in there. Yellow Jackets cheerleaders working hard in the Georgia Dome here, cheering on the crowd. From Calhoun to the Georgia Dome for this double A championship ball game. Christian back in the inside. Oh, he lost the football. He didn't see it. Bodies diving for it. Wolves say that they have it near the 47. We'll wait until they unpile it. We don't need to. Referee Wynn says football over to the Wolves. Colton Houston. Or Michael DeWalt saying that he came away with it for that Buford defense. That's a very fine tackle by Darian Smith. This is inside. I mean, he's coming up and he makes a, a real Quick, good tackle. The ball sort of pops out. Well, you could just see it on the face of Dustin Christian after it came out of there. He had no idea where the football was. First and ten for the Wolves. On the ground, they go left side with the carry is Jones. Jones up to the midfield stripe, pick up a three on the play. Wolves at 2.28 and clock remaining here in the first down. First half facing a second down and seven. And you know, Jeff, that the Wolves would love to tack on a score here. Well, they, they got the last one, and, uh, and now you get a turnover, and you get midfield. You get, you get in the short field. You got a lot of enough time to get a score. Jones in the backfield behind Ross. Extended eye with Curry. They'll roll it right side. Firing upfield in traffic. This one's going to be picked off, but we have a flag coming in on that play. The pick was by Brent Wallraven, the leading interceptor for the Yellow Jackets defense, but we'll see if this is going to stand. I think it's going to, they're going to call on a free tag, the, the, the tight end. I believe it is. Now, he was the one running the deep crossing pattern. No, well, I'm sorry. I'm, I got it wrong. It goes against Wallraven and the Yellow Jackets. I thought Wallraven had very good position. Uh, obviously, the official saw it another way. He throws the ball nicely on the run. As they look at the replay That's here in the Georgia Dome. Automatic first down. Half the fans don't like the call, half of them do. As our executive producer <laughs> Tom Varnace would say, that's a tight call. <laughs> A minute 56 left first half. Pitch left side Jones, but a whistle. This play has to shut down. We have a dead ball, delay of game on the offense. They snapped the ball before they're ready for play signal. Huh. Referee Rusty Wed with the call. Yeah. This one going against the Wolves. Kind of quick snap. Or they're ready. Or the officials are ready. You yeah. can't do that. <laughs> you want to do it for the defense is ready, but for the officials, it's a no-no. 
Calhoun just picking up their fifth penalty. All right, this one going against the uh, Wolves of Buford. But Calhoun with five in his first half. Uh, no whistles, no whistle on that play. Now the flag comes in. An early movement by Jones from the running back position. I think Rusty Wynn had a little tr tr trouble getting the flag out of his pocket on that one. Illegal motion on the offense. Penalties declined. Second down. Well, now that's a lot of faith in, in, in your defense. Uh, it'll be second and 15. You've already got the one five yard penalty, but you're not. You don't care. You don't want to put them in a second and 20. You feel comfortable. You'll stop them. That's uh, second and 15 rather than first and 20. From the 39 yard line. High formation behind Ross. Short drop keeps it on the ground. Jones with the football tripped up near the 35 yard line and rolls ahead near the 32. Carter Harrison able to get the leg and trip him up. But a nice effort on the run by Sean Jones, the junior. It's a good looking play. Uh, lead draw. They, they hit it for about 10 or 12 earlier in that first uh, this first half. Good block this time by Jessica Curry's blocking on Kirby, the inside linebacker. And uh, a nice bit of running by Jones. Third down and seven now. Jones back to the inside. Not much more there though on this play. Maybe a yard. We are under a minute remaining in this first half. It will bring up a fourth down now for Buford. This is the tough part. You got a fourth and six play in you. And fourth and short, different story. Fourth and six. Ross looking over the play selection on his wristband. He'll start this play in an eye formation. Ross with play fake going to the end zone throwing it and the pass goes incomplete had a man down there Dylan Lee in the end zone and Lee not able to pull it in a lot of mustard on that pass for Ross. Well they had uh, Jamal English going uh, against Derek Rogers one on one way on the other side of the field in front of the Calhoun bench and Rogers does a great job of coming off this play I mean. He's almost involved in the play as he reads it very, very well and just turns loose Jamal English. Can play both defense and a very fine offensive wide receiver. Dylan Lee able to get one hand on that football. Nice play by Dylan. So fourth our football now over to the Yellow Jackets after the fourth down effort fails for the Wolves. On the ground, Christian works it the right side, tripped up and works his way to the 33. A.J. Cunningham on that stop for the Wolves as we come to the end of first half of play here in this 2A championship ball game. Outstanding defensive first half of football for both teams. Wolves leading at 6-3 over the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun. Wolves trying to go back to back to back as double-A champions. Calhoun trying to get there first as John Nelson's downstairs. Nelly. Thank you, Charles, here with Jess. You knew it was going to be a fight. You got one, 6-3 at the half. Four, I'm, I'm really proud of our kids. We've just kept getting stops and getting stops, hanging on. To believe we're going to have to do a little better to win this football game in the second half, but we hadn't turned it over, and we've done some good things. Also pulled something out of the back of the playbook to get yourself in position to score with the halfback option. Yeah, we, we, had to, we had to have that in the package, and we had to run it all year. And that, that was a big uh, you know, move the chains for us, to say the least. Thanks, Jess. Thanks for your time. Jess Simpson's up three as we head to the break, guys. 6-3, Wolves lead it. You're watching the 2009 GHSA Football Championships on GPB. It's just me here. We are back live here at the Georgia Dome at the intermission. It's the Wolves and Buford leading the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun 6-3. to three. And right now the fans inside the Georgia Dome being entertained by the marching Yellow Jacket band of Calhoun High School directed by Michael Clark and Larry Brown, drum majors Lindsey Brown. 208 members of the Yellow Jackets marching band in, in this performance this afternoon. You'll hear Soak Up the Sun, which they just completed. And you'll hear That's the Way I Like It out of KC and the Sunshine Band era. And they'll finish it up with Hey Jude. So let's go down and take a listen.
John Nelson standing by with the Calhoun Marching Band. Nelly. Thank you, Charles, here with Wanda Westmore on the principal of Calhoun, and it is the return of the Golden Shoes for another year, which means that Calhoun is back for yet another final. Go ahead and flash them. There you go. What's the week been like up there at Calhoun? It has been crazy. We sold 4,000 tickets in four days. We have everyone supporting us and wanting to be part of this, so it's been pretty crazy, plus a Christmas parade last night. And a great part of it was our band and cheerleaders and, of course, our team. And you had a special visitor on the send-off today at the, the high school. It's a really special moment. Yes, we did. Today we had uh, three of the members of the 1959 team. That was the last time Calhoun has had a state championship, except for the one we're going to be having tonight, I think, <laughs> hopefully. Yes. So what else is going on at Calhoun? It's a special award that you guys just received a little while ago. Yes. Uh, yesterday we received from uh, news, U.S. News and World Report that we were one of the ten best high schools in the state of Georgia, and that's based on academics. So we were really thrilled about that. Now, I guess talk about all the work that goes involved, that's involved in all those kind of things when you're dealing with academics and athletics and the balance and what it means to the school. Well, I think we are all strong believers that a well-rounded student is the best kind of student. We have a 92 percent uh, graduation rate, which is phenomenal in the state of Georgia. And I think it's because of programs just like this. We want every child involved, and once they're involved, the academics go right along with it. Academics are first, but it takes it all. Okay, real quick, 30 seconds. I need a prediction for the second half, although I know what you're going to be predicting for the second half. Real quick. Oh, yeah. We're going to come back the second half, and we are not going to leave this place without that trophy tonight. Absolutely. We have a determination like I have never witnessed before, and we're going to do it. Watch and see. Wanda Westmoreland, principal of Calhoun High. Thanks for your time. Let's send it back upstairs. We'll see if Westmoreland is right as we get set to go to another break. It's Wolves leading at 63 over her Yellow Jackets. Back with more after this. You're watching the 2009 GHSA Football Championships. Back, everybody, inside of the Georgia Dome at the intermission. It's the Wolves with Buford leading at 6-3 over the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun in this 2A classification championship ball game. Fans now being entertained by the marching band of Wolves from Buford High School, band directors Wallace Conrad, drum major Lucas Berto, 75 members as part of this band of Wolves. They're the 2009 AA champs of the Super Bowl of Sound Invitational, and they're the 2007 and 2008 Class AA Silver Division champs at Lake Lanier Tournament of Bands. Dave's performance entitled Georgia on My Mind. Let's go down and listen. presents Sweet Georgia Brown.
And now watch as dance line member Cassie Oliver displays her amazing clogging on The Devil Went Down to Georgia. The band concludes tonight's performance with an arrangement of the University of Georgia and Georgia Tech fight songs with a Georgia On My Mind tag. Marching band of Buford for finishing their performance here at the Georgia Dome. John Nelson standing by at field level. Nelly. Thank you, Charles. Here with Dr. Bitterman. It's a double A final, but we got three A's to talk about. What's our first A? Well, I'll tell you what. At Buford High School, we're striving for triple A excellence. That's excellence in academics, athletics, and the arts. So the first day is definitely academics. All right, what's going on academically up there? Well, I'll tell you, we've had an incredible year. Uh, these past fall results with the Georgia High School graduation writing test, we increased from 92% pass rate to 98% pass rate, which is comes from a lot of hard work from our students and our faculty. Arts, what's that's the second one, right? Well, the, la the second one's arts, and I'll tell you what, we're doing a lot of incredible things with that. Uh, Kim Staples in our one act play, and Chris Fowler and Tim Harris and Kim Staples with our uh, literary team won the state championship. And we know about athletics because that's going on here in the, in the second half. Dr. B, thanks for hanging out with us. Let's send it back upstairs to Charles, just me and Dr. B. Thank you, John. Band performing here, they're concluding. As we take a look at some of the first half highlights, we'll start with the Yellow Jackets trying to get it in the hands of their playmaker, Derek Rogers, and Rogers answers running a pass up the sideline, setting up this 39-yard field goal by Adam Griffith. 
to give the Yellow Jackets a 3 0 early lead. The Wolves of Buford tried to counter that. They started out trying to go in the air, and Ross having problems in the air there, throwing in the double coverage. Lucky not an interception. Then rolling right side at the sideline. This one almost picked off as well by the Yellow Jackets secondary. So at two attempts by Ross in the backfield, you say, what do they do now? They'll let somebody else throw it. They give it to English, and English tosses it downfield. Has a man there behind the coverage. That's Head, and Head gets the football inside of the red zone. And Jessel Curry caps off the Buford drive with the touchdown left side. And the Buford Wolves had their first lead, but on the point after a tip, that was blocked by Hunter Knight for the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun. And that is where we stand at the intermission. 6-3 lead for the Wolves. Now let's take a look at our Georgia EMC halftime stats. Jeff. Well, as you can see here, uh, Calhoun is rushing for 64, Buford 107. Pass yards for Calhoun 89 and 66. I think the thing that sticks out is that Buford's doing a pretty good job of containing the passing attack of Calhoun. They threw for over 3,000 yards during the season. John Nelson standing by with the head coach, Nelly. Taking, taking our lives into our own hands here, practicing special teams. Coach, that was a rough first half. Yeah, we're not playing very well right now. Defensively, we're playing great, but offensively, we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. And, Hopefully we can play better uh, offense the second half. I was going to say, obviously it comes down to adjusting to their adjustments. What do you do to adjust? Well, we, you know, we talked about some things at halftime there, and hopefully the adjustment we make will be good enough. Uh, but, uh, you know, defense got to keep playing well, and we got to get going offensively. Coach Lamb, thanks for your time. Good luck in the second half. That is the report from Calhoun's side. We are at the break, heading to the third quarter at the Georgia Dome. Second half coming up from GPB. Brenda Lee. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Buford leading at 6-3 as we see some scenes from the season here in Atlanta. This just at Centennial Park, not too far from here in the Georgia Dome. But boy, if those sights don't get you into the Christmas mm -hmm. slash spending mood. I only hear this song once a year. I mean, <laughs> well, I hear it a lot during this time of year, but I only hear it one time of the year. Brenda Lee singing this song. All shots from Centennial Park. Uh, Beautiful facility just outside. Forecast possibly for snow tomorrow, so that'll really put us in two. Boy, they dress the city up nice. It's, it's, yeah, they really do. It's a great time of the year. It will be the Wolves of Buford getting the football to start the second half. Eric Barr and Sean Jones will stand deep to receive the kick of Adam Griffith. Griffith booms it into the end zone. Over Barr's head, it'll come out at the 20 for the Wolves to start the second half. They lead at 6-3. Glad you could join us for our coverage of the 2A championship ball game on GPB. First of five coming your way over championship weekend. Ross in the first half, two of eight for 32 yards. The junior leading that Wolves offense had some problems, struggles in that first half. It seemed to settle as that first half progressed though. First and 10 from the 20. Three receivers lined up in an eye of the, uh, just at the bottom of your screen. Lone setback is Curry behind Ross. They'll keep it on the ground. Curry angles left side, pushing the pack near the 24. Jeff, you had a couple of observations while we were at break about that first half with the teams in terms of the ebb and flow of it and one team not really being hurt by at least the penalty there. Yeah, this is a field position game, a little bit old-fashioned in that respect. Both teams scored 60 touchdowns during the year. They're high-scoring teams. They're both playing good defense. Buford has made the pass plays, a 24 and a 23 to Holly in English, and they've held Rodgers down. He's caught one for 22, but they've stymied a big play passing attack of Calhoun so far. Second down of five, extended high by eye behind Ross. He'll pitch it. It'll be Jones working at the right side. Jones knocked down near the 28-yard line, about two yards shy of the marker. Gus Roberts on the hit for the Yellow Jackets. Well, the adjustments at half will be interesting, Charles, but I don't think Buford can be content with just to kind of grind it out and keep field position. They, they need to drive and score themselves. They haven't been able to keep a consistent passing attack. They made a couple of big passing plays. And give Calhoun credit, they're, they're slowing down the run. Buford averages better than almost six and a half yards a carry in the season. They're only getting five in the first half. 
Jones with 53 on tonight. This time they give it back to the inside. Darian Smith on the carry for the Wolves of Buford and Smith works it for the first down. The Yellow Jackets, 14-0 coming into tonight's ball game, ranked number one. On the replay here, the big guys up front, Jeff, the ones you referenced in that first half, doing a good job of kicking out to create that hole on the first down run. Well, you saw a really nice job by the left guard in the center, Alexander and Arts, on the double team on that defensive tackle. There. Straight ahead on the carry is Staub, and Staub picks up about two for the Wolves. Second down, seven. They would, they'd like to get Ross rolling out a little bit and letting him throw on the run. He hasn't been very uh, as accurate as I think. He almost, in fact, two interceptions in the first half. But they like to get him outside and see if he can make a play with that arm. Second down at seven from their own 38. Ross, short drop, now gives it on the ground. Behind the line of scrimmage, Jones is hit, and a good surge by the Yellow Jackets defensive front. Third down and eight, a loss of a yard on that play on the carry by Jones. Nolan Alexander, the senior center for the Wolves, state champion on the literary team and the state champion at Stipper Radio speaking. So it's an honor student as well at Buford. Doing a nice job of blocking tonight. Yeah. A third time they tried to run a lead draw. This time Calhoun had defensed it well. Kirby. Ross in the pocket. Now he'll try to tuck and run. Has his legs tripped at him at the line of scrimmage. Caden Parker able to grab the leg, hold on, and pull him down. Pick up about maybe one, maybe two on that play, Jeff. Yeah, the key was the very first down run. They only picked up three. They needed a little bit more. Move the move the sticks. Keep it the you know the the downs in order and keep that third down short. Good job by Calhoun that time defensively to put a stop on. So Curry will kick. J T Palmer stands at the 25. Curry, the left-footed kicker. This one going airborne here in the Georgia Dome. Palmer squeezes at the 20-yard line, and that's where the Jackets will come on offense. You got the sense that Jeff on that possession by the Wolves. Yellow Jackets really had a gut check there. The Wolves with that third down possession or the third quarter possession to start that quarter, showing that they're removing the football, but Yellow Jackets able to hang in there. Wolves lead at 6-3. We'll step out. You're watching the 2009. So glad you could join us in our coverage of the 2009 GHSA football championships on GPB. Third quarter, eight minutes, 13 seconds left in it. Ever wonder about your, what your pet is thinking? Find out what scientists have learned about the way animals communicate. Supernatural science, animal telepathy, December 22nd at 9 p.m. right here on GPB. That is a good question. I have a Chih Tzu poodle, and he just looks at me sometimes, and I'm going, oh, what in the world is he thinking? <laughs> I didn't think of you for a poodle man. Uh, uh, Would you call him a, a kind of poodle? Was it? A little mixture, Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu poodle. So that's a small poodle. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I get a lot of looks when I'm walking him in the neighborhood. <laughs> First and ten. Nance to the sideline. Got a man there. Catch made near the thirty. It's Palmer with the grab, and Palmer works it up near the thirty-three. Working against a little bit of a soft zone. And uh, just an easy pitch and catch to Palmer. He makes a big target. He's got to be at least six foot two. Palmer with two catches in the first half. His first of the second goes for a first down. From the 33. On the ground, Dustin Christian looking for room on the inside. Found some, but he's up to the 36 yard line. Pick up a three on that carry by Christian. Christian, the leading ground gainer for the Yellow Jackets in that first half. Eight carries for 45 yards for that long run of 14. 
Vance on the throwback, total screen coming to Rodgers. Rodgers in traffic. They get him behind the line of scrimmage. He lost the football. It's loose near the 32. Wolves say that they have it. No indication that there. The indication by referee Rusty Wynn. Wolves with the turnover. Swope is able to put the hit on a rod. A bar hit the, put the hit on a Rodgers and Swope able to cover that football. Well, here's one adjustment they made at defense. So they're not going to give him that little bubble screen to Rodgers. Excellent play by Eric Barr. He's out in front of it. He's stripping the ball. And then A.J. Cunningham rushing the passer and then getting out and getting involved in the play. Good pursuit by Buford. Big turnover. Rodgers trying to make something happen, carrying that football too loosely. And Barr able to knock it out of there. So the Wolves with a 6-3 lead now. They are down at the 31-yard line of the Yellow Jackets after the turnover. Ross, extended eye behind him. Sends a man in motion left side. Play fake. Rolling right side. Tuck and run now. Ross eludes one would-be tackler down to the 28-yard line. Alex Hunter on the stop for the Yellow Jackets defense. Ross looking deep here. You can see the rollout, buying some time to set the play up. He's got uh, Dylan Lee down the field. He also has uh, Kurt Freetag. And uh, decides to tuck and run. That's great reaction by the linebacker. Josh White does a nice job of reacting to that ball. Second down and seven. We're under seven minutes remaining in this third quarter. Jones in motion left side. They'll pitch it that way. Oh, it was Holly in motion. Jones on the carry, but a flag thrown in at the end of that play. Kedron Aker likely guilty of a face mask. Roll go against the Yellow Jackets. Five-yard face mask. You see a good job by Dylan Lee blowing a play up in the backfield, but it is the face mask. Yeah. Uh, that you know that's the one that stands out. Kadrin Aker just sort of grabbed it because they had him for no gain. So now the football placed at the 22-yard line after the assessment. Second down and one for the Wolves. Penalties thus for Calhoun with six, Buford with two. Short side of the field they go on the carry is Barr. Barr got it inside of the 20, but the Wild Yellow Cat surge pushes him back outside, and he'll have enough for the Buford first. Getting a sense, Jeff, that the momentum now clearly behind the Wolves. Well, the turn over the short field, you gain a lot of confidence from that. You don't have to drive it the length, and uh, you're right. I mean, I mean, they, they're, they're trying to control a little bit with the running game to get a penalty right after the turnover. They haven't really had to work for a lot of this yardage. First and 10 from the 19. High formation behind Ross. On the ground, that's Curry. Curry just lays in there and pushes it down near the 17. Kirby from under the pile for the Yellow Jackets with a stop. Calhoun doing a good job of crowding the line. They want to take that run away. They want Ross to pass. You, you talked about in the first half, he was two out of six. They did hit two big plays, one the halfback option pass and one that he threw. But uh, I think they like to put the ball in his hands, throwing. Second and eight, they'll pitch it right side. Jones with a blocker in front of him. Slices his way down near the 11. Aker in on a stop for the Yellow Jackets. But that run by Jones puts them awfully close to that first down marker. Toss into the unbalanced side, into the strength, the right side where they've moved the extra lineman over. Lead with the fullback. 33 that time. That was uh, Nathan Staub. Third down and three. They go left side. Inside with the carry is Darian Smith. And Smith. Got maybe a half yard, not much more. Things really get tight when it's inside of that red zone. Yellow Jackets really play real tough. We saw it in the first half when he stopped Buford on a fourth down play. And I think Buford hit four field goals on the year. That's not very many for a high school team, especially playing all those games, getting into the into the state finals. So they, this is a little bit of a stretch maybe uh, uh, for them. They, uh, that's why maybe he goes for it on fourth down sometimes. Petroni will kick. 
They'll put it down near the 14. It'll be a 24 yard effort for Petroni. As long of the season is 37. Petroni bangs it hard. Did he get it through though? And he missed it left. Pushed it left here in the Georgia Dome. So the Yellow Jackets hold off the scoring attempt by the Wolves. They coughed it up on the fumble, and now they'll have it back starting from their own 20. Well, not many turnovers in this game. He just, what does he do? We're looking at a replay. He just sort of kind of pushes it left. A little bit of a hook, maybe. Didn't start it wide enough. So the Yellow Jackets trailing at 6-3 go back offensively. Either team able to take advantage of the fumble. One in the ha first half, that one. They right try there. to set the total screen. This time they try to go to Christian. And Christian knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of about five on that play. Paris head on the stop for Buford. Calhoun has got to get Derrick Rogers more involved in the game. 19 and a half yards a catch. He caught six for 63 in the first half, about 10 yards a catch. One of them was a 22. So Buford is doing a nice job of containing him right now. It's a loss of four on the previous play. Second and 14. Nance looking upfield toward the sideline. Palmer with the catch, turns upfield, breaks out of one tackle, works his way past the 40, lost the football at the 45. Initial indication, it stands. Football over to the Wolves. Darian Smith covering that fumble that was knocked out of there by Jessel Curry. You could stand one blow of the turnover, Jeff. Let's see if they can withstand two now. Coverage is going to Rodgers a lot. Palmer is being uh, loosely covered. Does a nice job of spinning out of the tackle of C.J. Moore. Then loses it, you say, by Jessel Curry. Butting into him. Jessel Curry, the son of Buddy Curry, the great... Falcon Lineman, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier tonight, but an old teammate of mine and a wonderful man, wonderful family. On the ground, left side. Wolves give it to our Eric Barrow to carry for the Wolves. Got it to the 44-yard line. You can see Calhoun sitting on that run right now, Charles. They're going to have to, they're going to have to be a little bit. They were created with a halfback option pass. I don't think you can go back to that, but they're going to have to get the ball down the field a little bit. Other than just trying to run right at that Calhoun front. They're not very big, but boy, they, they, they fly to the ball. Second down and nine. Only one on the previous play by Barr. From the 44 of the Yellow Jackets. Ross under center. On the ground. Sliding ahead on the carry. It was Nathan Staub or Andre Johnson on the run for the Wolves. Johnson with his first carry of the night, the sophomore. Looking for a little spark, maybe. You know, this has been a great night against Parker, the nose guard, 93. He and Alexander really been battling. He's been submerging Alexander a lot. Ross rolling right side. Now stops, raises, fires. Got him in there. Catches made by Holly. Holly near the 32 yard line, enough for the Buford first down. Well, this is good faking by Ross. He does a nice job of freezing Carter Harrison and then stops, sets his feet, delivers the ball. Holly has caught the big pass in the first half for uh, 24 yards. Now will push the football to the 32. First and 10 for Buford. Trying to take advantage of a Yellow Jacket turnover. They lead it 6 3. In motion. They'll run at that right side. Jones with the football. Steps up inside the 30. Now works his way back inside of the 25. Down near the 23 yard line. Aker on the stop, but that's the second level of the defense as Jones runs it for the Wolves. Well, he does a nice job. Hunter Knight, six, gets in there and he steps out of his tackle. Sean Jones keeps his feet moving, steps out of one tackle, steps out of another one a little bit farther down the field. Nice nine yard pickup where it looked like maybe it would have been for two or three. Under two minutes remains in this third quarter. Timeout taken on the field. Timeout. Calhoun. It's taken by the Yellow Jackets. They need it. They're on their heels right now. Points are hard to come by. Uh, you certainly don't want to give up a touchdown right now. 
Timeouts remaining. Yellow Jackets with two. Buford with three. We caught up with Coach Simpson to find out what he likes about this profession of coaching and hear his comments. You know, what I like best about coaching, uh, you know, I told my team Friday afternoon, we were at a walkthrough in, in the middle of Georgia at, at Westside Macon High School. Um, I, I told them this week had been a win for me as a coach. Whether we won or lost Friday night had been a win. I'd gotten a phone call earlier in the week from a, from a college coach who had gone on to describe to me how one of my former players had helped change the culture of their football team. And, and to hear how that young man had grown emotionally, spiritually, how his physical toughness, uh, his work ethic had affected the people around him and where he had come from and how he had grown um, just made me a, a, like a proud papa. I, was, I, was, I had such a great week because of the growth that's happened in that young man's life. I think that's what means the most to me as a coach. Back on the football field after the timeout. Buford with a second down and one. On the ground, Curry, left side, had enough initially for the first down. Tried to punch it to the outside. We'll see if they give him that forward progress. I think he's got it. Baker in on a stop for the Yellow Jackets. Got some help from Holbrook. You see, I can never be an official or a line judge with these glasses <laughs> trying to mark that ball. <laughs> you know, I never have the right spot. I'm not sure if they do either, though. I mean, it's... It's an art to, to spot that sure. ball where they do. They spot that one for Buford first down. On the ground now. Ooh. On the inside, on the carry is Staub this time. And Staub working it down to the 23 yard line. And Alex Kirby on the stop for the Yellow Jackets. As Alexander just submarine, uh, or being submarine by Parker, you can see where he sort of tips over him. So it was an effective job by Parker because he sort of clogged the hole a little bit. He's getting way low on Alexander. I mean, Alexander's trying to block him low, but he's submarining an awful lot. Second down at seven. Pitch right side. Jones steps past the line inside of the 15 down at the 12. Hunter Knight stops, stops him for the Yellow Jackets. But the run by Sean Jones puts the Wolves close to that first down marker. Now that's a nice call. Here you got a nose guard submarine and clogging up the middle. So you just bypass him. Let Alexander go off on the linebacker to the second level. You run the toss. It widens out. The defensive end widens out with your own offensive tackle and guard. Big hole from where the center was to where the tackle was. Nice job. Good call. Third down. Looks to be about a yard. If they've got two on the scoreboard, we'll go with that. Third and two with eight seconds remaining in the third. <laughs> They'll get the playoff. Jones, right side, runs it for the first, inside of the 10 yard line, down near the eight and a half. So Jones gives the Wolves a fresh set of downs. One second left. They won't get another playoff before we come to the end of this third quarter. Boy, it's close here to Dome. 6 3, the lead for the Wolves over Calhoun. You're watching the 2009 GHSA Football Championships on GPB. We get set to start this fourth quarter in the double A championships. It's the Wolves of Buford and the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun. First play of the fourth quarter, first and eight. Wolves give it to Jones, right side. Jones works it down near the seven yard line. So it is first and goal to go, now second and goal to go for the Wolves of Buford. Gotta get it on the edge a little bit. Calhoun tightening up in there. Buford now running the ball through three quarters, 40 carries, 39 carries, 173 yards. Numbers after three starting to favor the Wolves more now. They were 243 yards of total offense to 194 Calhoun. Where is on a defense? You run on it that much. Jones trying the left side this time. Doors closed for him. Didn't get it back to the line of scrimmage. We have lost the yard. Josh White in on the stop for the Yellow Jackets. Jones with 17 carries for 77 yards to the third quarter. Having a nice night. The linebackers really flowing though. Kirby, Josh White, as you said, really flowing. 
time of possession, really speaking to the tale that you're talking about, Jeff, in terms of wearing down that Yellow Jacket defense. Buford with the football for over 24 minutes into the third quarter. Third and goal to go from the four-yard line. Play fake. Ross rolling, dumps it. Touchdown, Curry. Very nicely designed, little fake to uh, 33. Nathan Staub in the backfield. They slip Curry out on the front side. So all that play action sort of holds the linebackers, holds who's ever covering Curry, or maybe even a little bit of confusion. Well executed, nice job by Buford. Petroni on now to try the point after. Petroni is good on the point after for the Wolves. So Buford taking advantage of a Yellow Jacket turnover. And they cap it on this nice rollout right side by Ross. Had his man Jussel Curry underneath. Curry able to walk it in for the Buford touchdown. Yeah, all that action, you, you got your linebackers, your safeties are looking. Now who do we have? Who's, they're crossing over. Who do I go after? Nice play action fake. Nicely designed play, well executed. 11 play drive, 46 yards after the turnover, 4 minutes, 52 seconds off the clock, capped with a four-yard reception by Jessel Curry. So Buford now with a 13-3 lead over Calhoun. Well, you make it a two-play game and a tight ball game, but uh, Calhoun is going to have to recapture something here. Field position at the least, some type of score if possible. But I have to open up the game a little bit. We got Derek Rogers standing back near the Ted. Christian back there as well. But they have been pooch kicking away from those guys all game long. No reason to expect them, the Petroni, to do anything different. Well, he's got that down, yeah. Charles, doesn't he? Sure does. And at the sideline, the catch is made by Aker. An acre out of bounds near the 27. You know, I saw a stat. I was reading a little bit about Buford's stats. I thought the kickoff return average was like 13 yards. And, and, and you know, then you look at it and you say, well, they're pooch kicking all the time or they're, they're doing some uh -huh. soft kick and they're not risking the, any, any kind of return at all on the kick. Well, you got to believe that's based upon what they do defensively, holding teams to just six points per ball game. Yeah. Eight shutouts. So. Well, you got to like your defense. You got you to feel very comfortable about it. First and 10 now for the Yellow Jackets. Their deficit is 10 now. 10 minutes, 48 seconds left in this championship football game. Nance, two-step drop going up top. They're trying to get it to the playmaker. Rodgers can't pull it in. They have double cover.
start with the Yellow Jackets, trying to get it in the hands of their playmaker, Derek Rogers, and Rogers answers, running a pass up the sideline, setting up this 39-yard field goal by Adam Griffith to give the Yellow Jackets a 3-0 early lead. The Wolves of Buford tried to counter that. They started out trying to go in the air, and Ross having problems in the air. They're throwing in the double coverage. Lucky not an interception. Then rolling right side at the sideline. This one almost picked off as well by the Yellow Jackets secondary. So that two attempts by Ross in the backfield. You say, what do they do now? They'll let somebody else throw it. They give it to English, and English tosses it downfield. Has a man there behind the coverage. That's Head, and Head gets the football inside of the red zone. And Jessel Curry caps off the Buford drive with the touchdown left side. And the Buford Wolves had their first lead, but on the point after a tip, that was blocked by Hunter Knight for the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun. And that is where we stand at the intermission. 6-3 lead for the Wolves. Now let's take a look at our Georgia EMC halftime stats. Jeff. Well, as you can see here, uh, Calhoun is rushing for 64, Buford 107. Pass yards for Calhoun, 89 and 66. I think the thing that sticks out is that Buford's doing a pretty good job of containing the passing attack of Calhoun. They threw for over 3,000 yards during the season. John Nelson standing by with the head coach, Nelly. Taking, taking our lives into our own hands here at practicing special teams. Coach, that was a rough first half. Yeah, we're not playing very well right now. Defensively, we're playing great. But offensively, we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. and. Hopefully we can be, play better uh, offense the second half. I was going to say, obviously it comes down to adjusting to their adjustments. What do you do to adjust? Well, we, you know, we talked about some things at halftime there, and hopefully the adjustment we make will be good enough. Uh, but, uh, you know, defense got to keep playing well, and we got to get going offensively. Coach Lamb, thanks for your time. Good luck in the second half. That is the report from Calhoun's side. We are at the break, heading to the third quarter at the Georgia Dome. Second half coming up from GPB. Tis the season for a Dance in America treat filled with holiday delight. All the magic and sparkle, the unforgettable music. Join host Christy Yamaguchi for San Francisco Ballet's dreamy new Nutcracker on great performances. Monday at 9 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the following. Before they were Atlanta Falcons, all of our guys were high school football players. We are proud to support the coaches, players, and fans who make this great game possible in communities throughout our state. Your hard work and dedication are an inspiration for all of us. Region salutes the successes of the teams in these games and is proud to provide communities across Georgia with a full spectrum of personal savings and checking services designed to secure your banking potential while simplifying life. Regions, it's time to expect more. Holidays from Georgia Public Broadcasting. Support for programming is provided in part by the following. Need a better way to apply to college? Visit gacollege411.org and fly through applications online. Start, stop, save, change information anytime. And it's automatically transferred to all your applications. GA College 411. Helping students plan, apply, and pay for college. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station serving all. You are watching the 2009 GHSA Football Championships exclusively on GPB.
They really do. A great time of the year. It will be the Wolves of Buford getting the football to start the second half. Eric Barr and Sean Jones will stand deep to receive the kick of Adam Griffith. Griffith booms it into the end zone. Over Barr's head, it'll come out at the 20 for the Wolves to start the second half. They lead at 6-3. Glad you could join us for our coverage of the 2A championship ball game on GPB. First of five coming your way over championship weekend. Ross in the first half, two of eight for 32 yards. The junior leading that Wolves offense had some problems, struggles in that first half. But seemed to settle as that first half progressed though. First and 10 from the 20. Three receivers lined up in an eye of the, uh, just at the bottom of your screen. Load setback is Curry behind Ross. They'll keep it on the ground. Curry angles left side, pushing the pack near the 24. Jeff, you had a couple of observations while we were at break about that first half with the teams in terms of the ebb and flow of it and one team not really being hurt by at least the penalty there. Yeah, this is a field position game, a little bit old-fashioned in that respect. Both teams scored 60 touchdowns during the year. They're high-scoring teams. They're both playing good defense. Buford has made the pass plays, a 24 and a 23 to Holly and English, and they've held Rodgers down. He's caught one for 22, but they've stymied a big play passing attack of Calhoun so far. Second down and five, extended high eye behind Ross. He'll pitch it. It'll be Jones working at the right side. Jones knocked down near the 28-yard line, about two yards shy of the marker. Gus Roberts on the hit for the Yellow Jackets. Well, the adjustments at half will be interesting, Charles, but I don't think Buford can be content just to kind of grind it out and keep field position. They, they need to drive and score themselves. They haven't been able to keep a consistent passing attack. They made a couple of big passing plays. And if Calhoun credit, they're, they're slowing down the run. Buford averages better than almost six and a half yards a carry in the season. They're only getting five in the first half. Jones with 53 on tonight. This time they give it back to the inside. Barry and Smith on the carry for the Wolves of Buford and Smith works it for the first down. The Yellow Jackets. 14-0 coming into the nice ball game, ranked number one. On the replay here, the big guys up front, Jeff, the ones you referenced in that first half, doing a good job of kicking out to create that hole on the first down run. Well, you saw a really nice job by the left guard in the center, Alexander and Arts on the double team on that defensive tackle. Straight ahead on the carry is Staub, and Staub picks up about two for the Wolves. Second down, seven. They, would, they like to get Ross rolling out a little bit and letting him throw on the run. He hasn't been very as accurate as I think he almost, in fact, two interceptions in the first half. But I, they like to get him outside and see if he can make a play with that arm. Second down at seven from their own 38. Ross, short drop, now gives it on the ground. Behind the line of scrimmage, Jones is hit, and a good surge by the Yellow Jackets defensive front. Third down and eight, a loss of a yard on that play on the carry by Jones. Nolan Alexander, the senior center for the Wolves, state champion on the literary team and the state champion in extemporaneous speaking. So it's an honor student as well at Buford. Doing a nice job of blocking tonight. Yeah. A third time they tried to run a lead draw. This time Calhoun had defensed it well. Kirby. Ross in the pocket. Now he'll try to tuck and run. Has his legs tripped at him at the line of scrimmage. Caden Parker able to grab the leg, hold on, and pull him down. Pick up about maybe one, maybe two on that play, Jeff. Yeah, the key was the very first down run. They only picked up three. They needed a little bit more. Move the move the sticks. Keep it the you know the the downs in order and keep that third down short. Good job by Calhoun that time defensively to put a stop on. So Curry will kick. J T Palmer stands at the 25. Curry, the left-footed kicker. This one going airborne here in the Georgia Dome. 
Palmer squeezes at the 20 yard line and that's where the Jackets will come on offense. But you got the sense that Jeff on that possession by the Wolves Yellow Jackets really had a gut check there. The Wolves with that third down possession or the third quarter possession to start that quarter showing that they were moving the football the Yellow Jackets able to hang in there. Wolves lead at 6-3 will step out. You're watching the 2009. Support for programming is provided in part by the following. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go. One hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, no, no. That's medium well. What? Are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burned. That's it. You're not going to come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Yeah, that is, I don't really you, you, you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. So glad you could join us in our coverage of the 2009 GHSA football championships on GPB. Third quarter, eight minutes, 13 seconds left in it. Ever wonder about your, what your pet is thinking? Find out what scientists have learned about the way animals communicate. Supernatural science, animal telepathy, December 22nd at 9 p.m. right here on GPB. That is a good question. I have a Chih Tzu Poodle, and he just looks at me sometimes, and I'm going, what in the world is he thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of you for a poodle, man. Uh, uh, what did you call him? A, what kind of poodle was it? A little mixture, Chih Tzu. Chih Tzu Poodle. So that's a small poodle. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I get a lot of looks when I'm walking him in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10, Nance to the sideline. Got a man there. Catch made near the 30. It's Palmer with the grab. And Palmer works it up near the 33. Working against a little bit of a soft zone. And uh, just an easy pitch and catch to Palmer. He makes a big target. He's got to be at least six foot two. Palmer with two catches in the first half. His first of the second goes for a first down. From the 33, on the ground, Dustin Christian looking for room on the inside. Found some, but he's up to the 36-yard line. Pick up a three on that carry by Christian. Christian, the leading ground gainer for the Yellow Jackets in that first half. Eight carries for 45 yards for that long run of 14. Vance on the throwback, total screen coming to Rogers. Rogers in traffic. They get him behind the line of scrimmage. He lost the football. It's loose near the 32. Wolves say that they have it. No indication, and there the indication by referee Rusty Wynn. Wolves with the turnover. Swope is able to put the hit on a rod. Amar hit the, put the hit on a Rogers, and Swope able to cover that football. Well, here's one adjustment they made at defense. So they're not going to give him that little bubble screen to Rogers. Excellent play by Eric Barr. He's out in front of it. He's stripping the ball. And then A.J. Cunningham rushing the passer and then getting out and getting involved in the play. Good pursuit by Buford. Big turnover. Rodgers trying to make something happen, carrying that football too loosely. And Barr able to knock it out of there. So the Wolves with a 6-3 lead now. They are down at the 31-yard line of the Yellow Jackets after the turnover. Ross, extended eye behind him, sends a man in motion left side, play fake, rolling right side, tuck and run now. Ross eludes one would-be tackler down to the 28-yard line. Alex Hunter on the stop for the Yellow Jackets defense. Ross looking deep here. You can see the rollout, buying some time to set the play up. He's got... Uh, Dylan Lee down the field. He also has uh, Kurt Freetag. And uh, decides to tuck and run. That's great reaction by the linebacker. Josh White does a nice job of reacting to that ball. Second down and seven. We're under seven minutes remaining in this third quarter. Jones in motion left side. They'll pitch it that way. Uh, it's Holly in motion. Jones on the carry. But a Flag thrown in at the end of that play. Kedron Aker likely guilty of a face mask. Roll go against the Yellow Jackets. Hey. 
Well, Five yard face mask. Well, you see a good job by Dylan Lee blowing a play up in the backfield, but it is the face mask. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, that's the one that stands out. Kadrin Aker just sort of grabbed it because they had him for no gain. So now the football placed at the 22 yard line after the assessment. Second down and one for the Wolves. Penalty sets for Calhoun with six, Buford with two. Short side of the field they go on the carry is Barr. Barr got it inside of the 20, but the Wild Yellow Cat surge pushes him back outside, and he'll have enough for the Buford first. Getting a sense, Jeff, that the momentum now clearly behind the Wolves. Well, the turn over the short field, you gain a lot of confidence from that. You don't have to drive it the length, and uh, you're right. I mean, I mean, they, they're, they're trying to control a little bit with the running game to get a penalty right after the turnover. They haven't really had to work for a lot of this yardage. First and 10 from the 19. High formation behind Ross. On the ground, that's Curry. Curry just lays in there and pushes it down near the 17. Kirby from under the pile for the Yellow Jackets with a stop. Calhoun doing a good job of crowding the line. They want to take that run away. They want Ross to pass. You, you talked about in the first half, he was two out of six. They did hit two big plays, one the halfback option pass and one that he threw. But uh, I think they like to put the ball in his hands, throwing. Second and eight, they'll pitch it right side. Jones with a blocker in front of him. Slices his way down near the 11. Aker in on a stop for the Yellow Jackets. But that run by Jones puts him awfully close to that first down marker. Toss into the unbalanced side, into the strength, the right side where they've moved the extra lineman over. Lead with the fullback. 33 that time. That was uh, Nathan Staub. Third down and three. They go left side. Inside with the carry is Darian Smith, and Smith got maybe a half yard, not much more. Things really get tight when it's inside of that red zone. Yellow Jackets really play real tough. We saw it in the first half when he stopped Buford on a fourth down play. And I think Buford hit four field goals on the year. That's not very many for a high school team, especially playing all those games, getting into the into the state finals. So they. This is a little bit of a stretch maybe uh, uh, for him. That's why maybe he goes for it on fourth down sometimes. Petroni will kick. They'll put it down near the 14. It'll be a 24 yard effort for Petroni. As long of the season is 37. Petroni bangs it hard. Did he get it through though? And he missed it left. Pushed it left here in the Georgia Dome. So the Yellow Jackets hold off the scoring attempt by the Wolves. They coughed it up on the fumble, and now they'll have it back starting from their own 20. Well, not many turnovers in this game. He just, what does he do? We're looking at a replay. He just sort of kind of pushes it left. A little bit of a hook, maybe. Didn't start it wide enough. So the Yellow Jackets trailing at 6-3 go back offensively. Neither team able to Take advantage of the fumbles. One in the half, first half, that one. They try right to there. set the total screen. This time they try to go to Christian, and Christian knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of about five on that play. Paris head on the stop for Buford. Calhoun has got to get Derrick Rogers more involved in the game. 19 and a half yards a catch. He caught six for 63 in the first half, about 10 yards a catch. One of them was a 22. So Buford is doing a nice job of containing him right now. It's a loss of four on the previous play. Second and 14. Nance looking upfield toward the sideline. Palmer with the catch. Turns upfield. Breaks out of one tackle. Works his way past the 40. Lost the football at the 45. Initial indication. It stands. Football over to the Wolves. Darian Smith covering that fumble that was knocked out of there by Jessel Curry. You could stand one blow of the turnover, Jeff, and let's see if they can withstand two now. Coverage is going to Rodgers a lot. Palmer is being uh, loosely covered. Does a nice job of spinning out of the tackle to C.J. Moore. Then loses it, you say, by Jessel Curry. Butting into him. Jessel Curry, the son of Buddy Curry, the great 
Falcon Lamick. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier tonight, but an old teammate of mine and a wonderful man, wonderful family. On oh, the ground, left side. Wolves give it to or Eric Barrow to carry for the Wolves. Got it to the 44 yard line. You can see Calhoun sitting on that run right now, Charles. They're, they're going to have to. They're going to have to be a little bit. They were creative with a halfback option pass. I don't think you can go back to that, but they're going to have to get the ball down the field a little bit. Other than just trying to run right at that Calhoun front. They're not very big, but boy, they, they, they fly to the ball. Second down and nine. Only one on the previous play by Barr. From the 44 of the Yellow Jackets. Ross under center. On the ground. Sliding ahead on the carry. It was Nathan Staub or Andre Johnson on the run for the Wolves. Johnson with his first carry of the night, the sophomore. Looking for a little spark, maybe. You know, this has been a great night against Parker, the nose guard, 93. He and Alexander really been battling. He's been sum submerging Alexander a lot. Ross rolling right side. Now stops, raises, fires. Got him in there. Catches made by Holly. Holly near the 32 yard line. Enough for the Buford first down. Well, this is good faking by Ross. He does a nice job of freezing Carter Harrison and then stops, sets his feet, delivers the ball. Holly has caught the big pass in the first half for uh, 24 yards. Now push the football to the 32. First and 10 for Buford. Trying to take advantage of a Yellow Jacket turnover. They lead it 6 3. In motion. They'll run at that right side. Jones with the football. Steps up inside the 30. Now works his way back inside of the 25. Down near the 23 yard line. Aker on the stop, but that's the second level of the defense as Jones runs it for the Wolves. Well, he does a nice job. Hunter Knight, six, gets in there and he steps out of his tackle. Sean Jones keeps his feet moving, steps out of one tackle, steps out of another one a little bit farther down the field. Nice nine yard pick up where it looked like maybe it would have been for two or three. Under two minutes remains in this third quarter. Timeout taken on the field. Timeout, Calhoun. It's taken by the Yellow Jackets. They need it. They're on their heels right now. Points are hard to come by. Uh, you certainly don't want to give up a touchdown right now. Timeouts remaining. Yellow Jackets with two. Buford with three. We caught up with Coach Simpson to find out what he likes about this profession of coaching and hear his comments. You know, what I like best about coaching, uh, you know, I told my team Friday afternoon, we were at a walkthrough in, in the middle of Georgia at, at Westside Macon High School. Um, I, I told them this week had been a win for me as a coach. Whether we won or lost Friday night had been a win. I'd gotten a phone call earlier in the week from a, from a college coach who had gone on to describe to me how one of my former players had helped change the culture of their football team. And, and to hear how that young man had grown emotionally, spiritually, how his physical toughness, uh, his work ethic had affected the people around him and where he had come from and how he had grown um, just made me a, a, like a proud papa. I, was, I, was, I had such a great week because of the growth that's happened in that young man's life. I think that's what means the most to me as a coach. Back on the football field after the timeout. Buford with a second down and one. On the ground, Curry left side. Had enough initially for the first down. Tried to punch it to the outside. We'll see if they give him that forward progress. I think he's got it. Aker in on the stop for the Yellow Jackets. Got some help from Holbrook. You see, I can never be an official or a line judge with these glasses trying to mark that ball. You know, I never have the right spot. I'm not sure if they do either, though. I mean, it's, it's an art to, to spot that sure. ball where they do. And spot that one for Buford first down on the ground now Ooh. on the inside on the carry is Staub this time and Staub working it down to the 23 yard line and Alex Kirby on the stop for the Yellow Jackets. This is Alexander just submarine uh, or being submarine by Parker you can see where he sort of tips over him. So it was an effective job by Parker because he sort of clogged the hole a little bit. He's getting way low on Alexander. I mean, Alexander's trying to block him low, but he's submarining an awful lot. Second down at seven. 
pitch right side. Jones steps past the line inside of the 15 down at the 12. Hunter Knight stops, stops him for the Yellow Jackets. But the run by Sean Jones puts the Wolves close to that first down marker. Now that's a nice call. Here you got a nose guard submarine and clogging up the middle, so you just bypass him. Let Alexander go off on the linebacker to the second level. You run the toss, it widens out. The defensive end widens out with your own offensive tackle and guard. Big hole from where the center was to where the tackle was. Nice job. Good call. Third down. Looks to be about a yard. If they've got two on the scoreboard, we'll go with that. Third and two with eight seconds remaining in the third. <laughs> They'll get the playoff. Jones, right side, runs it for the first, inside of the 10-yard line, down near the eight and a half. So Jones gives the Wolves a fresh set of downs. One second left. They won't get another playoff before we come to the end of this third quarter. Boy, it's close here to Dome. 6 3, the lead for the Wolves over Calhoun. You're watching the 2009 GHSA Football Championships on GPB. For centuries, people have struggled to communicate with animals. Ow! Some can get the wildest horses to do their bidding, while others believe their pets can talk How to many them. Fingers? <laughs> Tuesday at 9 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the following The Mabel Reader Foundation. Support comes from All-American Specialties, the symbol of excellence in the awards industry since 1972. Graphic design and custom fabrication done in-house. Information available at allamericanspecialties.com. Thursday at 8 on Georgia Public Broadcasting. Support for programming is provided in part by the following. Competing. Learning. Achieving. Sportsmanship builds character on the field and off. As leaders in our communities, Georgia's locally owned and operated electric membership corporations are proud to sponsor the Georgia High School Association and to help our student athletes become the leaders of tomorrow. Georgia's electric membership corporations, lighting the way. This is Georgia Public Broadcasting, your PBS station serving all of Georgia. You are watching the 2009 GHSA Football Championships exclusively on GPB. We get set to start this fourth quarter in the AA Championships. It's the Wolves of Beaufort and the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun. First play of the fourth quarter, first and eight. Wolves give it to Jones, right side. Jones works it down near the seven yard line. So this first and goal to go, now second and goal to go for the Wolves of Buford. Got to get it on the edge a little bit. Calhoun tightening up in there. Buford now running the ball through three quarters. 40 carries, 39 carries, 173 yards. Numbers after three starting to favor the Wolves more now. They were 243 yards of total offense to 194 Calhoun. Where is on a defense? You run on it that much. Jones trying the left side this time. Doors closed for him. Didn't get it back to the line of scrimmage. We have lost the yard. Josh White in on the stop for the Yellow Jackets. Jones with 17 carries for 77 yards to the third quarter. Having a nice night. The linebackers really flowing though. Kirby, Josh White, as you said, really flowing. Time of possession really speaking to the tale that you're talking about, Jeff, in terms of wearing down that Yellow Jacket defense. Buford with the football for over 24 minutes into the third quarter. 
Third and goal to go from the four yard line. Play fake. Ross rolling, dumps it. Touchdown, Curry. Very nicely designed, a little fake to uh, 33. Nathan Staub in the backfield. They slip Curry out on the front side. So all that play action sort of holds the linebackers, holds who's ever covering Curry, or maybe even a little bit of confusion. Well executed, nice job by Buford. Petroni on now to try the point after. Petroni is good on the point after for the Wolves. So Buford taking advantage of a Yellow Jacket turnover. And they cap it on this nice rollout right side by Ross. Had his man Jussel Curry underneath. Curry able to walk it in for the Buford touchdown. Yeah, all that action, you, you got your linebackers, your safeties are looking, now who do we have? Who's, they're crossing over, who do I go after? Nice play action fake. Nicely designed play, well executed. 11 play drive, 46 yards after the turnover, four minutes, 52 seconds off the clock, capped with a four yard reception by Jessel Curry. So Buford now with a 13 to three lead over Calhoun. Well, you make it a two-play game and a tight ball game, but uh, Calhoun is going to have to recapture something here. Field position at the least, some type of score if possible. They have to open up the game a little bit. We got Derek Rogers standing back near the 10. Christian back there as well, but they have been pooch kicking away from those guys all game long. No reason to expect them, or Petroni, to do anything different. Well, he's got that down, yeah. Charles, doesn't he? Sure does. And at the sideline, the catch is made by Aker. And Aker out of bounds near the 27. You know, I saw a stat. I was reading a little bit about Buford's stats. I thought the kickoff return average was like 13 yards. And, and, and you know, then you look at it and you say, well, they're pooch kicking all the time or they're, they're doing some uh -huh. soft kicking. They're not risking any kind of return at all on the kick. Well, you got to believe that's based upon what they do defensively, holding teams to just six points per ball game, yeah. eight shutouts. So, well, you got to like your defense. You got you to feel very comfortable about it. First and ten now for the Yellow Jackets. Their deficit is ten now. Ten minutes, forty-eight seconds left in this championship football game. Nance, two-step drop going up top. They're trying to get it to the playmaker. Rogers can't pull it in. They have double coverage at the forty-five, just in front of the Buford bench. Eric Bard, C.J. Moore on top of Rogers. Well, he's getting cushioned. Uh, you can see C.J. Moore running with him. So he's backed off the ball, getting cushioned. They're trying to get it deep. Hard to throw into that double coverage. Well played by, by Buford. C.J. Moore able to knock it away for the Wolves. Maybe a stop or a crossing pattern. Yeah. Something to get, uh, to get him more involved in, in the game. Talking about... Derek Rogers, their big play receiver at 19 half yards a catch, 20 plus touchdowns. First, second and 10 now. Nance looking upfield, going back to the middle of the field this time. Pass goes incomplete. He had Wall Raven, a correction. It was Cody Ralston in the route for the Yellow Jackets, and Ralston not able to pull it in their midfield. That one, they've got to catch, Jeff. They have to. It's a little bit behind him. He does a nice job of running a pattern and getting behind uh, Jessel Curry. And he looks him off. He looked, everybody's kind of drifting over towards Rogers, so he is open. Would have been a, maybe a, a little tougher than a normal catch, but you got to make plays like that if you want to win a game of this magnitude. Vance, short roll to his left. Now they'll do a throwback total screen to Rogers. Got some room there, but nicely covered by the Wolves at the 31 yard line. Had a little hole there, but the Wolves able to cover that and pull him down way short of the first down marker. Well played by Buford. Cunningham, the defensive end, sort of falls off on that play. He's only about six foot, 195 pounds. Does a nice job of though of getting over and helping out on Rodgers. So that'll bring fourth down and Blaine Beavers on to put it away. Third putt of the night for Beavers. English stands near the 37. 
English calling for the fair catch at the 35. Bobbled it momentarily, but able to hang on to it. <laughs> Tune into GPB on Christmas Eve for an evening full of music and songs of the season. It's Faith Hill's Joy to the World. The festivities begin Christmas Eve at 8 p.m., and it's only on GPB. It's the best time of the year. Get a little plug in, too, if I can. Well, I'll, I'll come back to it sometime after a little lull here. Wolves back on offense now from their own 34. Quick pitch left side. Jones slips on the surface behind the line of scrimmage. And have lost a yard on that play. Just lost his footing here on the turf inside the Georgia Dome. Well, it, once again, Holbrook, the, uh, the linebacker. Calhoun's linebacker is all very, very active. Does a nice job of penetrating that time. Anytime you can get that far back upfield and take on the fullback on his, on your, ter your terms, then you win defensively. Nine minutes of the clock running here. Previous job, the Wolves ate up almost five minutes of clock on that five minutes of clock on the drive. They can get another sustained one here. They'll keep that Yellow Jacket defense uh, offense off the field and run that clock down. White on the stop of Jones, who carried it. He was knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. You know, run block, run <clears throat> a run blitz by Alex Kirby, inside linebacker. He's back in the backfield, too. They're trying to force the action very quick and not allow him to get that toss going. Five tackles and one sack on the night for Josh White. Done a great job for their Yellow Jackets defense tonight and all season long. This time Ross going under center. Third down and 11 from the Wolves 33. He'll take a short drop. Raises, fires through it underneath. He's trying to get it to English, but he's set to throw earlier, sooner than he wanted. Wasn't able to get entire arm strength on that pass. Yeah, I don't think they were coordinated in that. He he, he looked very, right away, he looked for his uh, tight end free tag, and he was uh, covered down, this, down the, uh, the hash marks, and then he went outside, but it, it didn't seem like the pattern and the quarterback were coordinated. He was a quick drop, as you said, Charles, only about a two-step drop. So now Curry will kick it, and Palmer will await. The Yellow Jackets lining everybody up front, indicating they may be trying to block this one. They're coming at it. High kick by Curry, but it's a short one. Out of bounds at the 40, take a decided Wolves roll inside the 30, mm. down to the 24-yard line. Mm. That's a rolling your way there, Jeff. I guarantee it. Uh, you know, that's probably his worst punt of the night. He averaged 40 in the first half, but he got the roll. He got the, the, the Buford roll. So the Yellow Jackets now. 8-10 remaining in the football game. They have got to get two scores. Nance working with no huddle. Shuffle players in and out of the lineup. Well, this is five wide. Yeah, that's what they're going, five wide. Yeah. yeah. Looks like someone running off the field is so far out there. They got, <laughs> they got they had Buford outnumbered over on the on the right side of the field. Rogers at the bottom of your screen in the low set. They'll give it to Dustin Christian on the catch. Christian works it to the 40 and fighting his way up near the 45 yard line. So Christian with the uh, little flick pass in the backfield had three blockers in front of him and got the blocks he needed to work it upfield for the first down. Yeah, nicely designed. David Collins is out there and gets a good block. Good kick out block. and didn't catch the cornerback's number. Darren Smith it might have been and then right up the field. So to the 45 yard line first and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Now they'll do the same thing on the opposite side of the field. Christian White, or Preston Christian with a good second effort. Nance fakes to the left. Now he'll try to tuck it. Eludes one tackler at the sideline. Works his way inside of Wolves territory to the 40-80 yard line. Took a real wicked shot there just in front of the Oof. Yellow Jackets bench. Well, nice move by Nance. Uh, uh, he freezes Jessel Curry. He's got him. Play. We've got a horsemelon tackle against oh. the defense. 15 yards, first down. That's a big penalty there. Yeah. Nicely designed, the fake bubble screen, lone rollout. 
either throw it or run it. He does a nice job of freezing Jessel Curry. And then tuck it and running. You're right, Charles. Yeah. I'm looking at the replay. He took a shot from a couple of guys. They wrapped him up around the collar, so that'll push the football down to the 33-yard line. First and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Man, since shotgun. Four receivers at the bottom of the screen. He looks that way. Now checks off. They're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Rodgers near the 10. This is going to be picked off. Ryan Dillard. Step to step with Rodgers. Pass slightly underthrown. But Dillard comes away with a pick for the Wolves. He needed a little bit more time. Just a little bit more time. A lot of pressure that time. Colton Houston getting in there and Colton Houston does a nice job. They run a blitz and he does a nice job of getting in just before he's getting ready to release. And I think he's in his in his sight. So he doesn't get everything he could on it. Good interception. Ball hangs a little bit on him. Look at the leap by Dillard there. Only 5'9 on the program. But showing some good hops on that one, Jeff. Fourth turnover of the night. Three fumbles, one interception by Calhoun. Buford doing a nice job garnishing some turnovers by their defense. Now they're packing it in three deep in the backfield. Trying to get some breathing room if they can. Second man through. Looks like it's Curry. Not sure at this point, but Curry fights his way up the middle of the gut. May have gotten a yard, not much more. Well, that's some tight alignment. Yeah, it? it is. <laughs> I mean, everybody, everybody, but maybe one back is within one yard of the line of scrimmage, it looks like, or two yards at the most. That's power football. Yeah. We're used to seeing that three back set, but at least a few steps behind the line yeah, of scrimmage. Yeah, the, the old veer or options. Dillard with three tackles on the night, but the interception looms really large for Dillard and the Wolves. They'll go I formation this play. Second and nine. On the inside, that's Curry fighting on one hand. Nice second effort by Jessel Curry to get it up near the nine-yard line. Hunter Knight and Kendrick Aker in on a stop for the Yellow Jackets defensively. But that's a tough run by Curry there. That's yeah, a good call. A little trap uh, in the inside. Alexander blocking back. Left guard uh, Sean Arch pulling around. Curry with 54 yards on the night. One touchdown. On the ground and one in the air. This time it's Jones. He lost the football at the 10 yard line. Batted around, it's still alive, and now the Wildcats come up with it. Football was stripped out of Jones's arms near the 10. It will belong to the Yellow Jackets, we believe. Kirby was able to cover it for the Yellow Jackets. Little lead play with uh, Jessel Curry blocking, and uh, he's got a good block, and, uh, and I believe the guy he was blocking took the ball out. I didn't catch that number. Step it up into the hole there. there. It he is, just yeah. stripped out of there by Kedrick Aker. Nice play by Kedrick Aker. He's getting blocked, and, and uh, there's enough awareness about him to reach out, and Sean Jones doesn't realize it's going. Yeah. So Yellow Jackets forced the turnover now. Inside of the red zone of the Wolves. They'll go, they'll pump once and keep it on the ground. That's Christian working at right side. And not much there. Michael Mitchell DeWalt on the stop for the Wolves. Good ball fake by Nance, but he gave it to Christian on the inside. No game. So second down. And 10, football still at the 11. Shotgun for Nance. Christian joins him in the backfield. They give it to Rodgers, right side with the pass. Rodgers fighting toward the five-yard line and knocked out of bounds there. It'll be third down and about four for the first down. As Dillard and Barr combine on the stop of Derek Rodgers. Well... You know, it's a, not a lot of time left, 514, so huge decision making. You, you, if you don't get this, you don't convert here, and you can't, can you convert? No, third and goal. You can convert. Get one just you outside get of the one yard one. line, yeah. Third down play. On the reverse is Rodgers looking for room. He's got some room at the sideline, a foot race. Rodgers, did he get in? Touchdown, yeah. Yellow Jackets. It was literally a race for the quarter. 
What a great call. Oh. I mean, a reverse down on the goal line. It, it took Buford pretty much by surprise. Curry is back there, almost has a chance to make a shoestring tackle. But Rodgers, too big, too fast, able to run out of it and get it into the end zone. Great right. call, great run. Runs right at the pylon. So the Yellow Jackets, they take advantage of the Wolves' turnover. They're setting it up here for the extra point attempt. Griffin set to kick it. And Griffith makes it a 13 10 lead uh, for the Wolves after the Yellow Jackets convert on the touchdown and point after. And they got it right into the hands of the guy they needed to as Derek Rogers runs it for the touchdown. 10 6 10 lead for the uh, 13 10 lead for the Wolves over the Yellow Jackets. Back with more. Touchdown run by Derek Rogers. Makes it a 13 to 10 lead Wolves of Buford over the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun. 5 6 left in the contest. Yeah, new game. Well, as I said, I mean, the reverse. You know, when it works, it is a beautiful play. And you don't often see people running it down around the goal line. It's a backup player out in the field a lot of times, but this is just nicely done. And Derek Rogers, uh, I think they, I think he has nine rushes on the year. He's averaged about nine yards of carry in those nine rushes. So they've used him before in that and a little bit in a little wildcat. But you can see that uh, he has a lot of tools. Three plays, 11 yards, just 44 seconds. The five-yard touchdown run by Derek Rogers makes it a three-point lead for Buford. Well, I'm kicking off and playing defense. Griffith set the kick. And they'll do exactly as you indicate, Jeff. Barr will fill it, and he's inside the end zone. They'll bring him out to the 20. This Christmas, let GPB take you on a journey to the wild side, a wilderness as pure as driven snow. You'll be awed by the beauty of nature's Christmas at Yellowstone, Sunday, December 20th at 8 p.m. right here on GPB. There's always a chance here uh, for Buford for the surprise play. And, uh, but, you know, for the most part, you're afraid of doing it too because you don't want to stop the clock. You want to keep the clock running, keep the ball running, try to move the chains on the ground they'll pitch it short side of the field angling back to the inside it's Smith with the carry Smith up to the 27 yard line that's a good first down effort for the Buford offense oh yeah this is you, you make the you make the second and third down very manageable when you pick up six like that or seven in fact very nicely done I didn't catch the number somebody was going for a knockout one of the linebackers and uh, and, and didn't get it Second down at three, rushing yards on the night. Buford, 183, Calhoun at 79. Teams playing actually to the strengths, though. Calhoun more of a pass team. And Buford certainly a ground attack. Short side of the field. They give it straight ahead. On the carry is Andre Johnson, and Johnson pushes it ahead for the Wolves' first down. A little bit of an inside trap. There's uh, Colton Houston, who we featured in the pregame. Does a really nice job of kicking out Cameron Budzias. Nice hole inside over the right guard. Play clock running, a game clock at 4.16 here in the Georgia Dome. Ross to the sideline to get the play for the rest of the game and brings it, brings it inside to the huddle now. We'll go nearing the four-minute mark. High formation. Left side, at Smith. Smith denied, but on a second effort, fights ahead near the 33-yard line. Reed Allen on the initial surge by the Yellow Jackets defensively. Well, time is your enemy right now, and uh, Calhoun is going to save those timeouts. He's got two left, and I, I, I agree with him. Uh, this play might be a little bit different with two timeouts left. Buford with three remaining. Second down and a full eight for the Wolves. Trying to get all that clock they can, Buford. Sure. The Yellow Jackets know they need to stop them on a, they can turn that football over on a punt. On the ground, straight ahead with the carry. That's Jones. 
Jones hit near the 36-yard line and pushed back. They'll mark him at the 36. That'll make it third down. And that'll be about five or four for the first down for the Wolves. All right, Coach. So. Uh, <laughs> Coach Lamb, he values those timeouts. He, he's going to let it get, let him run this thing down in the third down. Believes he's going to get a stop here. Believes in his offense. They're not going to need too much time to score. Clock at 2.35. And you can see that Coach Simpson standing at the sideline. He may be getting set to take a timeout here. He is. He, he's going to run it down as far as he can, yeah. too. Get, him, get the most perfect play they can here in this third down. And he'll take the timeout with 2.20 remaining in the football game. Wow, what the drama we have here. Yeah, Third nice. down and five. That's their first timeout. With two minutes, 20 seconds left. Nicely done by both coaches. Yeah. Uh, you know, you just... You, you like that. that. Very fine coaching. Excellent point. Uh, big game, a lot of line state championship. One play game, and every play and every every click of the talk, clock means something. Well done by both coaches. Yeah, you talk a lot about the players having to do their job, but the coaches as well. John Nelson standing by the sideline. Nelly. Thank you, Charles. Time for a very important promotional announcement. For those of you that like the games here at the Dome, next week a very special edition of Prep Sports Plus. It is a very round number. We've even got a little bit of a video flashback for you as we go to our graphic. 1995 Money Matters Henderson High School. Charles Wardle's a part of it. 400th show next Thursday and next Sunday. All the highlights, all the action from here at the Dome on GPB. Charles, it really has been 400 episodes, hasn't it? Oh, it really has. <laughs> Congratulations to Tom Bardace and everybody at Prep Sports Plus. So glad to be a part of that 400 show history. Amen to that, Charles. Such a valuable property for the state of Georgia. On a third down play, they're going to try to throw it upfield. An air ball lofted in the air. Comes down with the catch as English at the sideline. A Paris head with the catch near the 30. Flag was thrown in there as well, but that's likely against the Calhoun defensive secondary. So the Wolves coming away with a big play. Darian Smith from the backfield with the pass. A wave off the infraction, the catch by head stands. That's two big catches in today's game by head, both by option plays. This is the second one. They really sell the run a little bit. Head really sells like he's gonna block on Wall Raven and then does a stop and go. But you get the sense that was the last thing the Yellow Jackets expected. Yeah, I, I, last thing I would have. I mean, that's a gutsy call by Coach Simpson at, at this stage of the game. Big time gutsy call. Second reception of the ball game for Paris Head for 69 yards. That one was a backbreaker, though. We go under, under two minutes now. Short side of the field. Stop made behind the line of scrimmage. Carry by Smith. Kirby in on the hit for the Yellow Jackets. So the Yellow Jackets and Coach Lamb taking a timeout now. They're forced to burn a foul, Jeff. Yes. I mean, it, you know, the game has swung on a couple of big plays, and, and that was certainly one of them. The four turnovers from Cal, uh, Calhoun tonight. To, one turnover, I think, from Buford. That meant something. That, I know Buford got seven out of one of those turnovers, at least. Tahoe oh, with just one timeout left now. And the two option passes. Yeah. One produced the touchdown after the extra point was later blocked, and then this one produced a huge first down. And Jamal English threw the first halfback pass. Darian Smith throwing that one. Might have the whole team lining up there <laughs> trying to throw those balls. Well, Calhoun right now, I mean, at some point in time, they might just go and sit on it. But they run this play, make them use their last time out. Calhoun needs some, some sort of turnover. Ross with an eye formation behind him. On the ground, they give it to Curry. Curry at the second level of the defense, down to the 22-yard line. Wall Raven on the stop with Curry about a half yard and a half shy of the first down marker. And yeah, that's a very manageable third down. Calhoun. That's the last timeout. So the Yellow Jackets burn their final one. 
with a minute 42 left in the football game. Coach Calhoun, or Lamb in your picture there for Calhoun, upset about something. Well, I think maybe they gave him a little too much yardage there. I mean, he was hoping maybe for a little bit of a, a longer third down probably, but you know, if I'm, I'm Buford, I'm running this ball. This is four down zone for me. Uh, maybe just, well, it was only a minute 42 left. Third down and three here. So the Yellow Jackets almost have to make a stop here. Yeah, this is a must. Yeah. Ross under center. Second man through. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Barr tried to get to the line, but he was knocked hard by the Yellow Jackets up front. That'll make it fourth down at a full yard now for a Wolves first down. Yeah, nice stop by Calhoun. They did a nice job interiorly. 52. Reed Allen, young sophomore. A minute 12 remaining. Clock running. Wolves going to run it down as far as they can. Coach Simpson there. There you see him in the shot. Looking at that clock, trying to determine when to take the timeout, and there he gives the signal to the official. So they burn off as much as they can with under a minute remaining. So for the Yellow Jackets, it really comes down to this fourth and one play. If they do not make the stop, Buford can run it out. Yeah, they just sit on it, the old Z-back. Everybody gets pluses on the offense. Nobody gets a minus on that old Z-back. Kind of boost your average if you had a bad day blocking <laughs> or something. And uh, they grade you out and, and you got the run out plays where you just sit on it. <laughs> but they do get a stop. Let's just say there's probably 55 seconds left. Less than a minute left of this football game. Let's go down and get our offensive player of the game. Hi, I'm Matt Ryan of the Atlanta Falcons. We salute the accomplishments of all the great teams and players in these championships. And now, here's your offensive player of the game. Get that call from the future broadcaster. He's Jessel Curry is our offensive player of the game. Right side, Barr with the carry. And Barr bars the door for the Yellow Jackets with that first down run. Now, if you've got Matt Ryan announcing Jessel Curry as the player of the game in person, now that my hat's off to GPB. Now that, yeah. that would be some trick. Yeah. <laughs> We're close. You're close to having it. Curry on the night, 11 rushes, 64 yards. Touchdown on the ground and one in the air for Curry. Nice way for him to go out as a senior at Buford. You know, it's an athletic family. The grandfather, Jessel, was a basketball player at the University of Kentucky for Adolph Rupp. And of course, Buddy Curry, great, great player out of the University of North Carolina. So the celebration now beginning for the Wolves of Buford. They measured it just to be sure here in the Georgia Dome. It's about a full yard more than what they needed. So with 54 seconds left, Yellow Jackets unable to stop the clock here in the Georgia Dome. It's going to be title number seven for the Wolves of Buford. Three in a row, too. Outstanding. Well, we've seen a bit tighter on a set than that one, Jeff. Everybody packed in to prevent a fumble there. But that looked pretty normal for the Wolves. A couple of times in the game, they packed everybody in. This one for the win. Quarterback Alex Ross excited about the results for his Wolves team. They lost the third ball game of the year against Lovett. But after that, Wolves business as usual. Class 2A champions. They defeat the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun 
And the Wolves of Buford, the 2009 GHSA Class II state champions celebrating here in the Georgia Dome. For the second year in a row, they defeat the Yellow Jackets of Calhoun, a game a bunch this year. Last year, final score was 45-21, 13-10 this year. John Nelson standing by, Nelly. Thank you, Charles. Down here with Jess. My first question, how does it feel to get yet another state championship? Because this is one of the sweetest ones ever. I, I really, I'm standing here and I don't know how we did it. I mean, I just, I didn't know we could stop them and slow them down. And we hung in there, the turnover, I thought, I didn't know. But uh, credit to these kids. I just, that's something else. That's all I got to say. That's unbelievable. Let's talk about that defensive effort. You kept this high-powered offense in check, kept everything never, in front of you. Never guessed it. But all those young guys out there, we didn't have a senior in the secondary, and they just kept the ball in front of them. The second and third effort when we caused a turnover down the field, um, just winning and losing. I, I can't believe how these kids have come together and the way they played. I, I'm just thrilled for them. You talked about the effort that you guys like to put. You're American. You like to run the football, and you ran the football all we day. We ran it, and it wasn't easy. It was tough sledding, but we got it done. Congratulations, Jess. Six titles in the decade for Buford back upstairs. Wolves win at 13-10. We'll step out. You're watching the 2009 GHSA Football Championships on GPB. Final here from the 2A Classification Championship. It's the Wolves of Buford. Winners over the Yellow Jackets. They win at 13-10. They go back, back, back. Three-time champions in a row for the Wolves of Buford. 13-10 over the Yellow Jackets. Sandy Creek and the Gladiators of Clark Central coming up later on tonight. But for Jeff Van Oat, this is Charles Ward. On behalf of John Nelson and everybody else at GPB, thanks so much for watching. Funding for the broadcast of GHSA Football Championships has been provided in part by Georgia's Electric Membership Corporations, Lighting the Way, by the Georgia Student Finance Commission, GA College 411, expand your opportunities. By Regions Bank, it's time to expect more. By the Atlanta Falcons. By viewers like you, thank you. And the GHSA would like to thank State Farm, Verizon Wireless, and Wilson for their support of GHSA athletic activities.